thank you all um, uh, for joining us uh, for this. Uh, thank you, Psychophile. Uh, thank you, Wick. Uh, thank you, Chris, uh, who is half naked. And uh, thank you, uh, Boy Kobe. Uh, uh, Kobe. And thank you, our good friend, Sonny. Thank you, Sonny, for stopping by. Um, uh, and I always happy to see my, my friend Kobe, a uh, amazing moderator here at the channel. Does a lot for us. We're always appreciative of him. Um, so yeah, uh, that was a very <laughs> long uh, again show that we uh, discussed this. Um, and so yeah, I, I, I suspected New Zealand had residential schools. I had just never actually looked into it. So I'm not surprised. I, I figured they did, but yeah. Um, and so uh, before... Uh, I guess let's do some introductions as to how you guys feel about all this, right? Um, these scores. A uh, psychophile. What are your initial thoughts about all this? Well, I mean, the 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 mass graves and all the abuses that occurred were all undeniably bad. But uh, I think we need to think about how we want to address this kind of stuff because, to to me, the 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 best way you want to go about it is asking these the descendants you know these indigenous peoples like what would you what kind of reparations would would you want you know and, and i always i always feel like people on the left will say like just just like you know uh we, we, there should be more money given to them or or something but I, I don't know if that's necessarily what what they're what they're wanting you know maybe it's a return of a certain certain property or maybe it's just recognition and they they, they don't want any assistance you, you don't know but i think it's I, I i don't know how much effort is being put in that direction uh chris i don't think uh reparations is on people's minds i think what people are looking for is justice and um the catholic church owes a lot of it to the world that like the things they've been doing it are like just insane I just like looked up an article where recently they only just now considered like looking at abuse against adults in the Catholic Church. Like just now, they just now started opening up investigations for that. Like that wasn't a, that wasn't possible to be a thing before. So it it's it, it's just another like thing to add to the list of atrocities committed by the Catholic Church. They owe more than reparations. Like the whole like this whole organization needs to be dismantled and taken down it's like completely disgusting it, it's it, there's no justification for any of it and they're just allowed to not only like control a large part of like how christians and like different countries operate but just like to consolidate power they have their own like they them they have their own city so they can drag whatever like in, like like evidence and information they have back to their their safe space to keep it secret so nobody else can get to it so they can hide whatever crimes they want we have no idea what more they've done it's insane but yeah are, are you suggesting that like we abolish the catholic church abolish yes. we, need to, we need to do more <laughs> than that like this is like there's people who are in power today in the Catholic Church that need to be brought up on charges, like multiple charges. I'm pretty sure there's people who are alive during this time of these residents of schools that are still here to this day, that are still in power in these Catholic churches who probably organized all this stuff. Like these people, like they're still around, they're still doing all these things, they're still doing worse things. And like we just let them do it. We like we complain about it when we find out the information. But what are we really doing about it? Well, as I understand it, the Catholic Church has national sovereignty, right? Correct. Yeah. They have their own. So, so when it comes to to stopping them, uh, and I agree with you that they're doing some heinous shit. They've done some heinous shit, and they're doing some heinous shit. But when it comes to actually doing something about it, aside from uh, bringing up charges where we can against individuals uh, with the church as a whole. I don't, I don't know what options we really know. have. Yeah, it's that's the problem. It, like we really don't. And, like, and we as allowed I, them to, we allowed them to get to this point. From Mussolini, of all people, Mussolini was the one who gave them national sovereignty, as I understand it. I could oh, sorry, wait, excuse me. The, oh, oh, Mussolini gave the Vatican uh, oh, natural sovereignty? Vatican as I understand it. Oh, oh I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. 
So the Pope was imprisoned in the Vatican City for like a hundred years because they couldn't deal up like the Vatican City basically like some war in like the eighteen hundreds kind of like the Vatican City was like it like tossed up between multiple nations kind of thing. Um, and then it was just under Mussolini that it got signed. I wouldn't say that it was like. I mean, like, I don't like the Vatican, you know, I don't like the, the Vatican City, I think it's fucked up, but I wouldn't say it was like a, you know, it, it was more of like, he just paper stamped, that, that had been in, that had been in the works for like, for like two, okay. two okay. for like two decades, yeah. Okay. Um, but, uh, alright, so, uh, uh, Wick, what are your initial thoughts on this? I, I mean, uh, I'm gonna echo what everyone else said, I mean, obviously, uh, residential schools and the mass grave is just more evidence uh, more uh, awareness of something that I personally did not know about until a few months ago, that I was ignorant of the extent uh, of the problems that had gone on in the past in these residential schools in Canada, New Zealand, Australia, and, and those areas. I mean, I I knew vaguely that they had existed, but I was not aware of all the atrocities that had gone through. So I think when, when it comes down to it, I think the most important part of all this is raising awareness, is letting people know, hey, this has happened and educating people on uh, the extent of the damages that have been done. So we can start uh, as I think uh, Psychophile brought up a great point is we really need to ask the people who are affected and some of them are still alive today we have people who are still alive today that have gone through these schools and so we need to talk to them and ask them what what can we do um sunny uh, um. oh yeah go i i'm fired up so um this is uh, horrific. This is disgusting. This is just another uh, event that uh, has proven a lot of the atrocities that went on at the residential schools in Canada. I have a lot to speak on that. Um, to speak about reparations, to talk about this event specifically, because boy, oh boy, is there a lot of rep reparations that Canada has to pay to the Indigenous people on this territory. But to talk about this one specifically, not even residential specific, resident oh, residential school specifically, because there have been reparations paid to um, uh, people who were students of residential schools and who are still alive today. That has happened. There was a settlement done in 2006. However, it was only done for people who were members of these schools who were, um, let's call them like uh, uh, overnight uh, students, you know, a lot of these schools served as boarding schools, right? They served as homes for these children who were taken away from their communities and this became their life. We know all about that. There were also a whole lot of schools who operated as day school, which took the kids in at, for the day and then to home at the evening or different um, combinations of these options. These kids are known as day scholars. And there was about 15,000 to 25,000 of these people alive in Canada today who have never gotten reparations for this because they didn't fall under like the guidelines that were put into place during this amendment. So there well, amendment, this um, uh, reparations. So that's its own complicated thing. I can get into that if anybody wants, but what is being sought after in this case is reparations for the people who, some of the people who went to this school as day scholars and for um, other people who went, uh, who went to residential schools and faced abuse just as day scholars and weren't like uh, boarding school students. Um, and there's a lot, there's a lot other, a lot more to be done there, but you know, there's an example I can give. Thanks so much. Yeah. Um, Kobe. Yeah, for sure. Um, not um, overly educated on the residential schools. So I don't want to speak in them. It seems like Sunny is much more educated on that situation. Uh, obviously, you know, obviously international atrocity. Um, but I think that uh, I'm, you know, I think it's an I think a little bit more productive to talk about like what we can do. Uh, I don't, I'm not from, I'm not from Canada, from California. And there actually is a uh, indigenous, indigenous, indigenous issue that is flaring up. Uh, so I, I figured I, I'm reading about that. So I figured I could talk about them or put a link in the chat one. 
Sorry, I had to let go of my push talk button. Um, so in California, on the California-Oregon border, there's uh, this place called the Calmouth Basin. It's like a place in which there's water that like, moves between California and Oregon. California and Oregon have had a whole host of water problems for a very long time. Um, there's a lot of resource dependence between the West Coast, up and down, all of water, a lot of our energy, et cetera. And uh, California is coming, we're in a drought, we're coming into like the worst parts of a drought. Uh, and so uh, right now, uh, it, what it, what's happening basically is the uh, EPA wants to shut off some of the water that goes to some farmers in Oregon uh, because there is uh, a uh, lake, I guess, that is upstream of this basin uh, that is uh, has a, a protected uh, fish uh, that is a, uh, a very important fish for this uh, specific tribe. They, they fish, they, you know, this is a, a resource that they feed themselves with. It is something that is a a spiritual importance to them and, and so on. And uh, it's also just an ecologically important fish. I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm, a, I'm not, a, not yeah. very knowledgeable about North Californian fishes, but I, I, I take, I take the people's word for them. Uh, but what's happening right now is that if anybody, if anybody of you remember uh, the uh, Bundy standoff, not mm -hmm. Bundy, the serial killer, but Bundy, the ranchers mm -hmm. uh, a couple of years ago, a bunch of ranchers in Oregon had a big standoff because of a grazing rights or something like this. Yeah. I don't know, yeah. Or something Huh? It, it was some like ridiculous thing where they just didn't. I mean, it, it, uh, it really, I think, it was they, they didn't I, want to pay. I, 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 quickly, it was. Um, uh, they had their cattle uh, and they were grazing their cattle on federal land, right? And they're just like, okay, we'll pay up, right, uh, for doing that. They didn't want to do it. Um, and they made like some like, oh, our liberty is being um, uh, violated here. And then there was a standoff, and white people uh, pointed guns at cops, but cops were like, oh, we let's let's uh, negotiate with them rather than murdering them like we would do if they were black. Any which way? Sorry, I, I'm getting distracted, Kobe. <laughs> but uh, the Bundys are getting involved in this. They're mm -hmm. trying to do a water war with this. And uh, it's it's a very unfortunate situation, right? There's not much support for, I mean, this is a very small tribe. Um, I was just looking it up. There are 200, about, about 200 tribes in California. Uh, only about 109 of them are recognized. And I, this is one of the recognized tribes. They do have some federal support. But with, with a lot of these things, especially when it's like a boycott, if you have like a bunch of, like you said, you know, you know white ranchers from around the country that are, that are support this, uh, uh, you know, uh, I, 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 unfortunately the indigenous people in this are, are, are a bit of a, um, you know, on a bit of a back foot. Hopefully maybe the, you know, since the EPA is trying to do this, maybe the Biden administration can step up. I know that there's some more indigenous representation in the Biden administration. So we'll see. This will be, this perhaps will be a good test. Uh, but the reason I bring this up, not to kind of take the light off of the residential schools is because when we talk about fixing the problem, I mean, you know, kind of addressing reparations in general, um, we have to remember that like, there's a wide variety of tribes, like, like, uh, and, and a wide variety of tribal issues. Uh, like I just referenced, uh, there's, uh, you know, there are like basically three broad categories, right? Which would be like urban Native Americans, which would be kind of a, it's kind of an old term, old, old fashioned term, but these are Native American people that uh, live in the city, don't have, a, don't live on a reservation, don't have much of a connection to a reservation. They're of course uh, tribal Native Americans and then uh, uh, unrecognized, unrecognized tribal Native Americans. And if you are, you know, depending on this category, this, this really affects very broadly your relationship with, you know, in, in, in America, at least I'm a, no, 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 don't know much about Canada, but it, broad, it massively broadly affects your relationship with the federal government and also your relationship with discrimination, right? Um, for example, many uh, uh, many Native Americans that live in cities uh, face racial discrimination from the different, you know, the, the people, different, you know, non-Native non Americans in the city. And they also face kind of a discrimination when they go back to their reservation because they don't, or they go back to these communities because they kind of seen as like an outsider. Uh, and then of course, there are many, uh, there are many unrecognized, uh, you know, there's no, like uh, many people don't know this. There's no, definition of what a tribe is if to the federal government that is right to the federal government it's it's just ad hoc they just give it out to the, the what it makes sense for them and so there's a lot of tribes that can't get recognized and there's not like a list you know it's not like immigration where you can there's a checklist you can do there's no checklist for them they basically have to they have to you know get lucky basically um and so when we're talking about reparations i i, I you know i think people some people were talking about in chat like uh uh, you know, like, you know, cash reparations up. I, I personally would, I would, I would, would see in America. And I think it's probably the same for Canada. There probably needs to be like a commission that is set up to like, look at every single, try to get the categories of like native Americans in the broadly, and then address reparations for each of these groups. Right. So like cash reparations would probably be a lot more effective for native Americans, that live in, li native Americans that live in cities because they're not going to benefit from say infrastructure on a, on a, on a reservation they don't live in. Right. But if you're, if you're on a reservation and you get $10,000, but you have no infrastructure, it's not good. It's, you know, there's a whole lot of problems there that's going to be popping up. Right. Um, so yeah, you know, not to take, not to take too much, a uh, 
focus off of the uh, uh, residential schools. It's obviously the focus. But I think that, uh, you know, in, in, in this case, like, you know, what's going to work for the folks that are victims of these residential schools is, is going to be way different than what works for the folks that are, say, an unrecognized tribe that are trying to get recognition or something like this. So I have a question for uh, Ugly, since she may know more about this. And, and if anyone knows the answer to this, please. Uh, what are they asking for in terms of reparations? The people of the boarding schools who had been affected in Canada by the, the indigenous people, what are they asking for specifically? So at the moment, um, like if I could give you like a specific answer for the people asking for residential schools, like the reparations. Um, so there currently there's a lawsuit that is to go against the um, federal government um, for these people who I was talking about, these day scholars um, to, I don't, you know, there hasn't exactly been like a sum of money set, but you know, lawsuits certainly are, it's money, right? Um, so, uh, uh, you know, I guess they're like probably looking for anything, honestly, you know, gotcha. and, okay. uh, and this is specifically after this has come out. And so 105 people are on board for the lawsuit. Like it's like a class action. Um, so that's, you know, that's currently the route that they're taking. But I think if you were, I think a lot of what they're looking for at the moment is healing, as one can understand, and probably along with a lot of the the wholesale reparations ideals that are are being looked for in Canada. You know, there isn't like just a specific line for like residential schools. There's kind of just the greater um, like atrocities committed. So do you think it would be be more effective to target it specifically to the residential schools or do you think it should be rolled into the wider reparations? I think both. I think that I think immediately that these people can can, you know, do this lawsuit and get some money. for sure. Um, and I'm still, I'm still a proponent of the like wholesale reparations for the, all of the indigenous people in Canada. But that one would probably take a lot longer than getting money to these people right now. So that's why I'm like, awesome, like lawsuit, get your, get your bag. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, we had a new person, uh, Jay. Uh, yeah, it's Jay. Can you hear me all right? Yeah. Yeah, hi. Sorry, I've been, I've been a long-time fan. I've just, uh, I'm a fellow Canadian. I've got a lot to say about this. Love to hear it. Uh, I've, I've just got to, like, echo the sentiment that, like, yeah, I think the people that, uh, like, were affected by these residential schools, they, I mean, they really should get reparations, but I really do think that outside of that we do like we do need to offer something to the the wider indigenous community because we've we've been treating them awful yeah that's that that's about it for now right yeah um but uh sure uh let us know if you have more to add uh okay um so that's you guys took this uh, where i was going to take this and talk about like what justice looks like what just does justice look like in uh, where the perpetrators of an act are are far away or out of reach or maybe long dead you know um what does that uh, look like um so you could say even for the people who are um uh who are uh, alive and who weren't directly affected right like there's damage done to a community when children are just being still and you can imagine if like half the kids of your neighborhood were taken away right that even if you weren't directly affected uh, um that uh there would be scars uh within that community so like what does that actually look like what does it look like to be um uh uh to I guess to try to become whole. I don't know if there's ever a way to become whole, right? But what can society do? So I think you you guys have already touched on a lot of uh, good stuff here. Um, I love what you had to say, Kobe, in terms of saying um, that that will look like we will look differently for different groups um, because they they're looking for different things. Um, those who are not connected to their uh, tribes, like we were talking about before, um, there were some who uh, took to the uh, the training they got in the schools, right? And like, okay, well, this this larger Canadian culture or larger American culture is now my culture, right? This, and by that, the white version of America or, uh, or Canada. 
That's that's now my culture, and I'll just go with that, right? I'll I'll make my way in this world. Um, so a person like that, like, what difference does it make if the tribe is stronger now through some sort of program? Um, it does nothing for them. Um, instead, yeah, a cash payment. Uh, but on this side, um, there is so much. These tribes are always underfunded, always under resourced, right? Uh, we were uh, talking about during. I, I saw an article, uh, no, sorry, excuse me, a, a news story where um, the res, um, uh, res, reservations, reservations weren't, didn't have uh, plumbing, right? They don't have plumbing. They'd have to go for their water, right? Travel very long distance, like fill up huge tankers of water and bring it back. Um, there was the, uh, what happened when the Native Americans, at least in states, asked the federal government for medical assistance in terms of resources, right? In terms of medicine, in terms of just straight up money uh, to ha handle COVID-19. What did they send? And this was just unbelievable, but, uh, but also very believable. They literally sent them body bags. <laughs> just... <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Like, in case you, you thought that um, racism and um, bigotry towards our indigenous brothers and sisters was something in the past, right? Just something we did in some far off time in the wild west. Right? No, that's happening still here today in terms of how much we don't give a shit about these people, how much we don't Is this have supposed to be like them. a joke or something? It wasn't. Why would it be a joke? <laughs> a really, I, I mean, a really sick joke. Or, or do they literally just they so, like, give us whatever you can and they get and they send them body bags? That's what they did, yeah. What, uh, yeah. Was, Yikes. I sent them body bags. Yeah. Recently, a, um, probably a commission, oh, the National, you know, the Health Authority found that um, 35 uh, uh, schools on reservations, so indigenous schools, were found to have uh, lead-contaminated water, 35 out of 261. Um, that's a big that's a big issue up here in Canada is that there's not safe drinking water on reservations. Um, that there were, recently, uh, there there was a big news story because uh, representatives of um, a nation in Canada that had an issue with their drinking water, uh, like got into where Trudeau was speaking to a bunch of like rich people and started shouting things at him about the atrocities um so and still nothing's really been done about this so yeah it's still happening today lots and lots there is a uh when, when prime you you say what does justice look like and and unfortunately i think in many of these cases justice just cannot be done um and that's unfortunate however what we can do uh, is try to fix the issues that these injustices have caused as best we can. We're never going to do it entirely. We're never going to do it totally because most of the perpetrators in a lot of these cases aren't with us anymore. Um, and in the cases that there are, it's going to be very, very hard to to prove uh, in some sort of court system and things like that. But when we talk about uh, these issues that a lot of uh, indigenous people face, um, in their communities, specifically when it comes to their communities, uh, well, uh, just changing how we deal with those communities, I think, is an important first step. And uh, Ugly Pie mentioned the drinking water situation in a lot of these cases. I think that should be uh, step one for the government is to go and make sure that they have livable conditions, you know, first world conditions in these these locations. So That's I, I, I kind of want to push back on this. You said this before, then we'll go to Chris and um, Kobe. Um, I kind of want to push back on this uh, in a little bit, right? Because first of all, I, I don't, I can't, awareness is not a bad thing, right? Really? Yeah, right. Um, but I feel like it's like always a conversation we have in these spaces. Let's raise awareness. Let's raise awareness, right? Where these problems like are known. It's not like the government, for instance, doesn't know, right? Um, yeah. What we need is action. Be uh, placed on uh, to push pressure on those governments. So that's what actually has to happen. Like every, they, they know the people who who uh, can uh, make a change to, to these uh, situations. There's already activists out there uh, who who raise awareness. So officials know what's going on, right? It's just that they either oh. they don't care or they uh, aren't empowered to do anything, right? Uh, and there's no political uh, 
pressure uh, to to force change. Um, so, okay, like, I... so, so like, so like, it, it just so so just finally, and, and I'll let you respond. Um, it, it feels like to me, and I'm curious if you all feel the same way. When I when I hear this talk about awareness, and not that you were trying to do this quick, I'm just very clear. Um, but when I hear this talk about awareness, it uh, reminds me of uh, breast cancer, right? <laughs> awareness about breast. No, we got it. We we. This... Reparations. <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah like uh buy all our stuff to raise them. everyone fucking knows about breast cancer everyone knows you, you, you did it you buy Mission a pair of these shoes we'll <laughs> give a pair to indigenous children <laughs> exactly right um so that's what i i hear again i know you weren't trying to do that but that's my thought but wait come on you can respond okay well when i talk about raise awareness uh you're absolutely right the government knows what the fuck it did mm -hmm. but the problem is like for example that can only speak anecdotally here is mm -hmm. i didn't know the extent of it until very recently and until i knew the extent of it how am i going to put pressure how am i going to join my voice to those putting pressure on the government to fix their shit. So when we talk about raise awareness, I know it can be used in a commercial way. It can be misused. And a lot of times it is, but it is a necessary first step because the more people who know, the more people who know just what was done, the more pressure they can put on the government and the more people who can raise their voice with our indigenous brothers and sisters and say, hey, this is not okay and shit needs to be done. And so that's, that's what I mean. To clarify, yeah. when I say, I mean, that. there there must have been people who worked at that school where that mass grave was found. They had no idea those bodies were there. You know? uh, no, there absolutely yeah. weren't. Uh, there uh, absolutely the children uh, actually. Every... The children knew that they were there. Well, an interview done in one from one of the men who um as actually a survivor of them. He's only sixty seven because a lot of these people aren't actually that they, old. And there's actually some knew... teachers that they are all still knew the alive bodies were there. there. Yeah, so when he was, he went there from kindergarten to grade three, and all of the kids knew that there was a grave site somewhere on the, there, they knew there was a grave site, because you think the people would notice if a kid just disappeared, they would notice, they knew these kids, but so no why one knew, it until now? because no one knew where it was, and man, I'm oh. so glad I can talk about this. So, the nation where this happened, the nation that lives on the territory where this happened, has known about this for decades. They've known about this and they've been trying to get the information out and have been being ignored and being covered up. And so it was a member from this nation that was finally able to get enough money to hire someone to do a radar scan. And that's how they have found it. They haven't even dug up this grave site yet. It's only from radar they saw all these bodies. It's so Crap. it was being purposely covered up and ignored. Let's go. That's to depressing. Let's go to um, Chris and then uh, Kobe. Okay, I want to push back slightly on a point um, Wicket made about there not being able to be any justice. I, I, this might come off as radical, radical, but I think not only should the governments be like uh, doing their part, you know, providing reparations on all this stuff, but they be, should be forcing the Catholic Church to do their part, also contributing reparations fork over any information that they have, oust anyone who's responsible, who's still alive, right? Or give the names of the people who are responsible, force them to ex acknowledge this stuff, force them to be a part of the uh, the healing of it, or ban them from operating within their country. Uh, I think we should be doing that. We should be classifying some of these organizations like the, like the Catholic Church as a ter terrorist organization at this point. They have operated almost exactly like some of these organizations, like a cult. Like they are, they are the quintessential cult. The Catholic Church is like the, the like it's like the 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 template for a cult. So like that, that's, it, that's a weird thing about this though. Is like like you you said most of the schools are are cat were Catholic, right? Um, is that that's correct. Um. Oh, so the schools are. I, so uh, I I don't want to say uh well, I, actually I'm pretty sure most of the schools are run by cat uh, by the Catholic Church I don't believe all the schools were from my understanding of this um but my my, my yeah. point is like um if if a lot of people were basically indoctrinated to be Catholic you know that's I I wonder is how is that still a big part of their lives like their their faith essentially mm -hmm. it, it, like and if if the Catholic, if it's not, I don't, I don't know what role the Catholic Church would really play in it. What? What? 
they yeah. did it. What? <laughs> yeah, they did it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, in the case of this school that we're talking about here in Kamloops, British Columbia, the uh, the Catholic Church ran the school from 1890 to 1960. No, to yeah, 1968, something like that, 1969, um, and then it was handed over to the federal government for about the next decade before it closed. So that's that's why there's uh, you see there's two sides kind of being blamed here because it is the government and the Catholic Church. But can you find the Catholic Church? Is that is that a thing you can do? Oh, we bitch, I'll try. To. I'll try. Yeah, you can bring lawsuits. You could be, uh, right, definitely right, bring civil lawsuits. That's what I mean. If, if, if What I'm saying is if the Catholic Church were to deal with this, I, I would imagine what they would do is is something to – would be their own internal, like, charity, basically. Uh, is, is, you know, hope huh? – Naive mean, as that is, you, you, I, I, you there's no like way that for the government to say, "Hey, this church needs to pay this." Well, they have before. Yeah. They have before. Yeah. They they do it to archdiocese, I believe, is how they do it. They say the the archdiocese of X has to pay, uh, whatever amount to these victims. They've done it before. It can be done, and the the Catholic Church, at least in modern days, at least has has gone along with 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 those kind of things. Um actually oh we got to push oh, back on that too. Maybe I'm um, no, 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 maybe but no. Really... Uh, but first we'll let um we'll let in Kobe um and then uh, and I just want to say thank you Jolos for the rate that's really kind of you. Um hope you had a good stream um if you're still around. Um uh, but yeah, we had a good uh stream. But we'll push back on on that and then we'll let in other people here. And we have Amanda here so we want want to include her as well. But first uh Kobe yeah, for sure. So I have like a bunch of stuff to say. So just first on the idea of the Catholic Church, like uh, I actually have multiple things to say on the Catholic Church. So I'll start. Number one, the idea like is it out of the ordinary for them to pay reparations? I'm just I, I did a cursory Google search. So it looks here, hundred million dollars to atone for slave labor. So it seems like this is something that the Catholic Church does do. Um, I mean, like, perhaps I mean perhaps are, would it be reasonable uh, to say maybe perhaps like you if, you it, you don't want to have a situation where like the Catholic Church investigates itself and then like it makes a bunch of money by like getting goodwill or something but that's I don't know that's like that's tertiary discussion in my in my opinion um but um the second thing is that um so listen okay I hate the Catholic Church okay not a fan of the Catholic Church I'm not a fan in the Warhammer 40,000 universe there is a class of a demon hunter called the Inquisitor I'm like a, I'm like an Inquisitor but for the Catholic Church okay I learned about it I have gone inside it. I was born inside of it just to destroy it okay but I do not agree that I necessarily think that like going after the Catholic Church is the most should be the number one on the list here. I think I think the Canadian government could probably do more material good in the short term. Uh, the Catholic Church is incredibly powerful, yeah, and and it's in Italy, and, and people. It, I think I mean I I I'm, I don't know what off the top of my head. I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that, especially I mean Italy has been controlled by a far right party for the last twenty years. I'm assuming that they probably have a pretty high rate of acceptance of yeah. uh, or as a report of the Vatican, right? So I don't know if anything's going to happen. And the there. fact that the federal government was in cahoots with the church the whole way through. It wasn't just yeah, the yeah. church doing this. So like um, yeah. But anyways, I um but yeah anyways um I think that uh just just to finish on the on the Catholic Church bit. Yeah I mean like I think that they should be held accountable. But just um historically uh, um you know going off of uh my research by watching the movie Spotlight, it does seem like uh Catholic Church is easy to like uh, actually prosecute them when they went after the diocese in a criminal charge, not at not by going like through the church, uh right? Which so like that, that you know you know that's something to think about. But uh going on uh, the other other things. Um, the idea of like raising awareness, I had, I wrote this down. I don't know what, what I don't remember what my point was on this. I don't know. I, th I think there's something to this. I think that it's like, like, think about it like this. I guess like people are more woke on these kind of issues. I don't know if we would have had, I mean, for example, we didn't have this kind of Na Native American representation in the Obama administration. Just, just a couple administrations later, we do. So, I mean, like, it does seem like, you know, I do think that raising awareness ha can have effects, but it's a little bit slower. I think that we're right now, I think we should be trying to focus on like actual trying to get you know, stuff moving, but I didn't want to briefly touch on the idea of justice. I do. I, I personally look at a, like a, a, a term of justice, like a long term. I personally think the past is the past. You can't change the past. I don't know. That's the way that I see it. Right. I view any type of crime, any type of atrocity. How do we stop this going forward? How do we make it that, you know, not to, not to say that the victims should not obviously have reparations and be put to peace. I, I believe that, but you know, Overall, systematically, we just have to make sure this doesn't happen again. And I think that uh, that is a, that's a, something I'm just not educated enough to say. I don't know enough about the Canadian government uh, in, in that sense. But is justice possible? Absolutely. In that framework, I think if we look at like that, that justice is making sure it doesn't happen to anybody else, then it is. Justice is always possible. I think that's a little bit more more of a constructive frame of justice. Look there. Mm. Um, but like, I just I just don't see any way of them sending a bill to the Pope. 
like you don't have who, to who send a bill to the pope you don't have to do that okay look it's, yeah, it's simple the idea, right. yeah, they, yeah, they have the holdings uh, the chariot the church has holdings all over the world right you want to keep your holdings you pay the fuck up or we uh take your holdings this is that simple just like for any other corporation which, which right holding bank accounts they own land land oh, they, yeah, they, yeah. They, they, they've got how do you decide how do they decide which one i don't like, know dude this is not that complicated oh my it's not, gosh it's, don't like talk to the lawyers about it i don't know we don't know the specifics of that stuff no 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 it's this is very simple what i'm saying is it's it's not going to be that simple no it is actually it literally is no it literally it don't do look just look it up right catholic church Do sex what? abuse scandal right like uh and the, it's very yeah go ahead Kobe. All, all they need to do all they need to do is they need to send one of the little friars down to their little massive, like, you know, Indiana Jones bunker and pull the fucking records. That's all that we need. That's what we need. That's what we need them to do. Give us, you know, do some photocopies. That's what we need. We need names. That's really, if, if, if the Catholic Church did that, they, they but buy them a decade. We'll, we'll, we'll push it off for another decade. And we'll uh, them actually, them. I disagree yeah. with you there. Oh, that, that okay, I'm, I'm, I'm just joking. I'm just no, joking. No, no, no. But, uh, but you know, you, you know, like, you yeah. know, they could, that's something, that's an actionable thing that you could do. You could yeah, say, that's it's like the fucking names of the, of the shit. They have that, absolutely. The Catholic Church does fucking records. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then also, uh, they need to pay the fuck up. Um, but yeah, you can just sue them like, like any other organization. It is not difficult. Just look it up. Catholic sex abuse scandals. Um, they got sued. Um, multiple times um uh, it's just okay anyway um uh amanda you want to uh I, th I think you wanted to say something um so amanda if you have something then we'll go to uh, omni yes um hi everyone uh yeah so um sorry you guys went kind of all off here but i just wanted to make a point that everyone's kind of talking in in past tense as if this is not still happening mm -hmm. and it is still happening in every country but it's now under the guise of laws and what is referred to as like child protective services um so yes we do need to right the wrongs but we need to first stop it <laughs> and um prime you made a great point about um you know activists and raising awareness and how we actually do need to take action and that action is organizing um and in order because you're correct you're correct um you know people that we elect are aware of this and so we need to make sure that we are involved in this process and electing people and helping elect people that will actually do something to stop injustices from happening um on top of that i keep hearing the word justice justice and I don't think that there is ever justice after an injustice. And um, yes, we can make things better, but there's never a way to actually get justice after you've already had an injustice occur. So that's my thoughts. Uh, I have a question. Uh, when yeah. it comes to child protective services, what are you referring to? I'm not very educated on the subject, so please. Yeah, um, so I'm not that educated uh with canada's child protective services but i am um i'm a, i started out as a child advocate and, and i'm in america uh but the systems are pretty much the same and i've spoken to people from uh australia and new zealand and in canada who have experienced the exact same injustices in regards to child protective services so each um country has like a department that is dedicated to protecting children. Um, for example, in America, that's uh, Child Protective Services and the federal government uh, provides funding for the state's uh, departments in order to help protect children. There is, so I actually, so I have a tattoo on my wrist. It's title, it's uh, in Roman, numer Roman numerals 4E. So that's actually Title 4E of the Adoption and Safe Families Act. Um, in the late 90s, what that did was actually incentivize the removal of children and um, from their parents' care. And I think that it was done in coming from good uh, position, but then, of course, the states were able to take advantage of it because what happened was um, the federal funding does not come unless the children are removed from their parents. So providing services so that children can you know, stay with their family, then the state picks up the budget. But if they're removed, then they get federal incentives. And it's actually a, 
I would call it a racketeering scheme. And it's a multi-billion dollar industry. It's where Social Security, why Social Security is getting drained. That is where um, the funding is coming from. But this is happening. It's constantly happening. And within uh, within all of this, the abuses are still happening. Children are actually more likely to be abused once they are removed from their family than they were. And most oftentimes, the reason for removals are due to um, like neglect, which is really just poverty. And like I said, the most targeted community is still uh, ind- indigenous people. And um, so, yes, we need to be talking in present tense. It is still happening and we need to get involved and take action and get involved in the electoral process in every single country and scream at the top of our lungs until it change, until it changes. So, Amanda, well, but I, uh, 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 okay, I'll let you ask, ask that question. Oh, uh, I, I'm just curious. Okay, oh, well, in, in this case, and again, uh, please forgive me if I'm not as educated as I should be on this topic, uh, because this is the first time I've heard about Title Four E. So, just to make sure I understand, first of all, is that the federal government will only pay, or they will only get federal funds if a child is actually removed. So they only get money if they uh, actually <laughs> remove someone from their home. Um, correct. Up until, um, okay. I think 2018, there was a change to the law in regards to how the fund funding can be um, given. And it was added that if the child remains in the care of the parents, some of that funding can still stay. Um, but it did not include grandparents or any other family members. And there's still these loopholes that just um, still further incentivize the removal of children. So uh, my, my, I guess my follow up question is when you say to, to scream at the top of the lungs to get things to stop, what are we trying to fix here in this? I, I get it that what you're saying, if it's true, and I have no reason to doubt you, is bad. It's terrible. Uh, that indigenous uh, communities are being more targeted by this kind of practice. But how do we how do we fix it? Do we just remove that law? Will that fix the problem? Um, we well, we have to elect people that will <laughs> change the laws. OK, but change uh, how? Would you like rewrite them, get them taken away? Um, OK, so just sure redo that, the law. And, okay. and so just take yeah. And I, yeah. And um, I mean, the laws are racist and whatnot and yeah so yeah i think i answered that sorry so uh, <laughs> amanda brought up a really good point um she um that so kobe what kobe did and kobe had to step away but um uh, kobe brought up something interesting to talk about like uh, making sure this never happens again um and then amanda probably said that this is still happening in terms of like we don't have like schools dedicated to child kidnapping um right now at least i don't i don't think so i hope not um but uh when uh children are removed from homes right children are more likely to be removed from homes uh if they're black if they're uh indigenous right um and why like the reasons why are neglect but it looks like that looks like poverty like just these parents simply don't have enough resources rather than giving them resources that they can take care of their children properly right and there might be um might be the fact that the children aren't being properly cared for but like rather than uh coming from a strategy oh well let's keep the family together unless there's obviously like physical abuse or you know or otherwise right instead of going from that direction it's like oh this kid's not getting enough uh to eat right well uh, instead of um making sure that the parent has uh, a job or um is taking care of any problems they might they might be experiencing right um we take their kids away uh, and it's just something yep. more likely to happen when you're black or you're native american so uh yeah that's the thing that happens still now yeah yes um and homelessness is actually a huge cause of children being removed from their their parents um it's one reason why people don't go to homeless shelters because they are afraid that their children will be taken from them and um so i guess that's kind of another way to fix this issue is addressing homelessness to get back on last night's topic (laughs) (laughs) so let's go to uh, omni and then uh, um sunny um okay so the the first claim that I heard made is that 
Well, I'm not going to respond to that first claim. Okay, so the the claim about the about how bad child protective services are, I think that this is true. Um, what I think the solution is, um, in in very in a very free market fashion, is a a sort of so the the way the system would work that I would advocate is so you make it so that the so you have stakeholders who have a financial who have a state who make who place bets on the quality of life of children. And then you have them determine what the policy of child protective services will be. So as a result, they have a financial incentive to figure out the the, the things that will best improve children's quality of life, such that by quality of life of indicators later in life, such as income, um, uh, that uh, they'll figure out the things that best work and then figure out the most effective ways of implementing them. I think that this is generally a better way of doing policy um, in that betting schemes are generally a very efficient way of aggregating information, which is why, for instance, the betting market outpredicts even election experts like Nate Silver, also outpredicts uh, weather forecasts. And um, f- futures markets are just generally a very uh, reliable way of coming to conclusions. And this would make it so that people have an incentive to figure out what is in the best interest of the children and then do and then implement those policies. And I think that we've seen with the current failure of child protective services that when their incentives are misaligned, we get large amounts of violence um, done to children. And so I think the solution is to make it so that the incentives are aligned. Um, and while this is sort of a wacky system that that seems to be drawing the general um the amusement of the crowd i think that the fact that it's counterintuitive is not a reason to reject the system and i think that the failures of the current system demand a new approach you want to marketize child welfare is that what yes. you want to do yeah you want to bring in sure i don't think that any problems would arise with that system i think that's perfect i think it's I... a perfect system and nothing wrong would ever happen i have Oh, is that Pisco? Oh, Pisco's Pisco. here. Oh, we gotta let Pisco in. Uh, Pisco. <laughs> can you say more about that? So you said that you want incentives aligned. Well, can you just say that again? Okay, so the way it would work. Okay, so there. So you would set up a betting market on. So you set up some quality of life indicators for children later in life. For instance, you know their income. Blackness. Blackness. Well. So- those would, those would be major indicators, right? What do you mean by uh, – well, I'm very stupid. Wait. What do you mean by a, a betting market? Yeah, so the, the – the, like This would be more helpful if I can right? get in like, more than a few words without being cut it off. Yeah. Um, so mean, like – yeah, yeah so, so, so you set up indicators of quality of life. So, for instance, income, um, how they rate their subjective happiness. And then you set up a betting market for individual children about what their quality of life will be later in life. Okay, so you set up people who bet on whether on how happy they'll be later in life. If and the betting is in response to different policies that might be implemented by CPS. So, for instance, um, so if we're if we're looking at you know children in a specific, if we're deciding whether to do a child separation, we would have would bet on whether children's long-run income and other factors that correlate with high quality of life will be higher later in life relative to if the policy does not pass. Um, they would be separated if it would be expected to be higher if it passes than if it, it What do you mean not. by betting markets here? So I, I agree that you know there are indicators perhaps that, that uh, I'm sure a lot of people would have problems making everything fungible and reducible to to the metrics and what metrics those are. I'm sure there'd be plenty of room for disagreement there. But suppose that I'm on well, board that you can reduce overall outcomes to to certain indicators. What do you mean by a betting market? So it's a market where people bet. So people so people would make estimates about what about whether the what so so people would bet on what they think the the person's income will be if there is a separation versus if there is not a separation. And the bet would be enforced. So if I bet that the person's income will be forty thousand um, dollars. By the time they're 25, let's say, um, then which is can I, uh, kind this of is on the, individuals. This is on on individuals. Right. Yes. So you so I bet on Charlie today. Is that is that what you're thinking of? 
Um, you bet well, on specific Charlie's individuals? Being considered being... What are we betting uh, on, though? Well, like, I, I, a failure I, success rate? <laughs> like, I'm so confused. Okay. On... Who, and who's the bet? But, 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 who's but, who's but, betting but, on, but, on individuals, or is it on general outcomes? What, what's the bet about? This sounds really bad. <laughs> like... Well, yeah, the profit yeah. motive comes kicks into play, and you're providing a lot of perverse incentives here. They're not incentivized to make it better. Well, well before we get to the criticisms, right. uh, before we get to the cri criticisms, and there are plenty so far, but I want to know what it is. What what are you betting on? What is this a security? What, what, who's enforcing it? And and what is this? So so what are you betting on? On the outcomes okay. of who? So if there is a so if there's a child who's they're considering separating there would be a betting market set up that would bet on what that child's income i am when i say or sorry not income um quality you answer of the question of the particular child so it's it's for particular individuals is that correct yes they bet on okay. about particular children and um how does this align i mean it sounds like you're making a this could exist right i, I could have a betting system for any event how does this work to the benefit of the child? Well, because so it would make it so that they have an incentive to figure out well-crafted policies that would only separate children if they're who's they who, who's they people who's betting. Has, the people betting have an incentive to, to figure to, out well-crafted and well-targeted policies that would be expected to increase the long-term quality of life of the children. Why I would do the, want to add a point that on me this might help a little bit. Um, right now, within the removal process of Child Protective Services, um, it's in civil court. And so they, you're not required to have a jury. And so no judges allow juries or other people to come in and decide whether a child should be removed. And that is one way many a um, activists and advocates think that the system could be changed is if we had this more of an open and transparent thing, type of process. There, of course, is issues in regards to, you know, children being underage and whatnot. But um, I do oh, think people it, do need to be involved. It, I wouldn't say betting or anything like that. No, it's a horrific idea that makes absolutely right? no sense. Because <laughs> one, so, one so what, problem, what let, me, let me tell you the problem. So, so one are there's problems of information. To have an efficient betting market, you presumably want to have, you need to have robust information, don't you? You need to have analytics and stats. That's precisely the information that we're worried about revealing with respect to children. If there are tons of privacy concerns that you're not considering and informational problems that make these not perfect markets. Of course, it, it'll be the case that, um, you know, certainly for some kids, per perhaps there'll be incentives or big money on uh, behind big bets to to get individual uh, some individual child but it's so sporadic the the mar overall market health of the marketplace is going to be totally ruined by the fact that a lot of people don't want to give you private information about their children to service your libertarian anarcho-capitalist view on how uh, child separation should be determined on a case-by-case -case basis furthermore we have this idea in the united states that's very salient to us known as equal protection of the laws and i think it would it would make many people upset to know that some children were being used as guinea pigs um, in this sort of callous betting market, where, of course, as Wick was about to get into, there's so many perverse incentives that would limit the, the scope of this betting market. If you have a bet on a, on a certain child, what's to say that you, know, you don't have the incentive to go and either fuck shit up for the child or make things better. You really want to have some people align with the interests of making that child worse off? Does that make sense to you? Guys, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Where did um, you okay. come up with this idea, man? So, uh, like, where did you hear about this somewhere? Um, uh, it's a spinoff of an idea proposed by the economist Robin Hansen. Okay, so in terms of the objection, so the first objection was, uh, well, but. First, remember, I can grant all the objections, and it would still likely be better than the current approach, which, as has been pointed out, I mean, the current approach separates unjustly along racial lines from their families, which results in heinous violence to large numbers of children. And so even if the alternative would not be perfect, if it is better than the current approach, which I think we have theoretical reasons to expect it to be, uh, then, uh, then it is. And the reason why you would expect the current approach not to be optimal is because incentives are not optimally aligned. There's an incentive for um, 
what are they called? The, Do you the, think I'm suggesting the current system is optimal? I'm, I'm trying to get to problems okay. with your system. Right, I don't think that you're suggesting the current system is optimal. My point is merely that if the system that I'm advocating is better than alternatives, even if it's not perfect, that doesn't count against it. First, you brought the statement, of course, yeah. Any okay. better, uh, better policy is it should be preferred. So I don't know right. what you're saying. And I, it's a yeah. And, and how so is Teddy removing incentives? That's literally like adding a whole mud line. You can get through the throat incentives. clearers. We don't need the throat clearers. Just get to the points where you're arguing against the privacy problems, the problems related to the inefficiencies that I pointed out. Right. Um, sure. So, and, so and yeah. Before you do that, just. Quickly, um, we got a hype train in chat. Hype train, um, if you could help us out, the hype train, uh, that's how we keep this the lights running here. Um, help us out the hype train, be awfully little kind. 67 percent, uh, 67 percent down in this hype train. Can we get to level two? We are awfully kind. We have less than four minutes left. Please help us out the hype train. Okay, uh, okay. I guess, can, so, I, can I ask something? Uh, so, wait, wait so, sorry, um, there, there were just like five objections given. Can I respond to them yeah, real fast? Respond, yes, okay. Um, so in terms of the pro so in terms of the problems of information that's inevitable current pro deep current uh, fuck I'm forgetting the name of the, of the agency that separate that like takes children away from parents um, other than ice the, the the one we're talking about in Child this context. Protection services. Child protection services, yeah. Um, so CBS, uh, they they already have to gather information. There's no reason why the information gathering processes would be any different or more invasive. Um, the question of making it public to betters, right? I mean, well, that's what you're proposing. It would be anyone would have access to inform yeah, will, sensitive information related uh, to specific it children. Be a, it would be a small number of betters. Would there be a yeah? What, well, what then are what the restrictions you care? on who gets to bet? Like. Can the judge that's making the ruling make a bet? There you go. You have tons of interested parties. You have potentially insider trading, or you know, it's a horrible problem. Well, well that's the incentive you, problem. You, but deal with the privacy have, problem first. You this already have problems in Philadelphia already, and, yeah, and we already have poverty, and we already have a lot of problems. And uh, but Wait, I'm, I'm in a betting market in Philadelphia over the, children. Uh, it was private, yes, but two judges, uh, pretty much. Um, Wait, wait, wait. Together with a, uh, oh my goodness, like a home for children. And I wouldn't call it betting, but yes, they took these kickbacks and whatnot. It oh, kickbacks, you're talking like, about, more talking. about that. Well, no, no. Was, yeah. can, can I under, so some judge issued an order yeah. allowing for, can I, I, I what did they say? I, 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 yeah, so they actually removed, like, I think it was uh, 1,500 children from their parents. And for literally like skipping class and they didn't allow them uh, lawyers or anything like that. And yeah, so they got a whole bunch of kickbacks, ended up in prison, was only there for a little bit of time, only got fined a little bit and are now out living their lives normally. Who got kickbacks? Who got kickbacks? So, so the booth, Judge yeah, so, so uh, if I'm remembering this correctly, um, there was like I believe I believe it was a boot camp situation. Um, please don't quit me on that, but I believe it was a boot camp situation in which um, the judges were incentivized to send kids um, for like whatever infraction, right, away uh, to this oh, camp. Oh, that's then they, not a betting market. It's not a betting market, a, though. That, that's you know you're getting a commission on sending someone to some. It would be like a if I send someone to a particular prison, I'd get a kickback, or if a doctor proposes a, a certain medicine they get a kickback that's not a betting market yeah, as i understand yeah, it. yeah you're right sorry this was used to illustrate one of the problems like for example if a judge is allowed to to make a bet or if the better yeah. those the judge, are the incentive problems yeah those yes, are the it, but, but i want to deal with the privacy problem which he hasn't well, dealt privacy is a little bit um can we, can we get right so on the hype train anyway omni go ahead yeah so we um we would have a small number of betters that could be achieved well one i mean it seems like Larger firms would likely rise to the top naturally, um, given the declining. Well, the closed market for elite oh. institutions to bet on children, nameless, faceless yes. organizations, and so so I'm not free to bet. Our individual is not free to make bets. You're saying this is a market reserved well, for corporations of a given size. No, I mean, you, would, you would have to go through specific protocols in order to get into the betting market, such as you know not. You would have to you know agree not to share the information publicly about the children um you would have to um i mean you know there there are a lot of there would be a lot of specific requirements to make sure that you're a reputable better rather than other than just Those, to, the parents don't want you uh, betting on their children they don't want to release this information i mean that would kill your system wouldn't it 
Um, Unless well, you I force mean, them to give it up, right? Well, yeah, that well, we uh, we uh, we would similarly to how currently parents are forced to give up their children often if we conclude that they're inadequately taking care of their. Children. But giving up their children in custody hearings, you know, if we do that, we might as well just release all their information to some uh, market participants, right? You don't. There's no problem there, right? Um, I mean, there might be a little bit of a problem, but I think it's better than the current approach. I mean, the current approach has all of the problems in that it has massive amounts of corruption, massive amounts of misaligned incentives. But there is no one who has an incentive to care about the well-being of the child. Under a market system, there would be people who have a financial incentive to figure out policies who would actually work and ensure a high well-being of the children. I don't. I, I, I can't understand why you think that that would be the case if, if you're presuming that there's going to be people betting against the children, right? If you're, if you're making bets, presumably there's someone betting against the children, right? Well, yes or no. Yes or no. There, there is a benefit are you here. And this insane no, notion. Because like, it's fun. You're right. It's, because it's, 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 it's fun. Um, hold on. So, Wait, so, can, can I have an answer to that question? Yeah, yeah. Can I keep this going? Oh, so, hold on. Stop, stop, stop. So, uh, can, uh, you want, what, 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 which question are, would you answer? Yeah. To? Are Go people ahead. betting against the children? No. So, pe- no. So, well, sort of. Child. Oh, sort of. Uh, yeah, you could. What do you mean? Marry? No, I mean. So if I, if there's Wait. an event, uh, you know, someone bets on the yeah. event to happen. Someone bets on the event not to happen, right? It's. Uh, am I misunderstanding something? Right now, so so people would have so people would make bets as to what the income of the child would be if a separation occurs versus if a separation does not occur. Um, Why does income matter? One of the indicators, I guess, is the most salient one. So when it comes to your head. <sighs> okay. But the income yeah. of a child, I mean, when well, do children are now? Your rate, rate well, it will, your it, it's, it's what the income of the child will be in the long term, not what it is will, now. Will, will race be taken into account for the, those betting odds of, of their uh, future <sighs> incomes? What's the okay. discount rate? I mean, how much are you discounting future <laughs> oh cash flows as opposed what, what to... What about their, like, their, their, like, their daddy's, like... Well, like penis size. wait, okay. What, what, what are we, what are we, Trauma, what are the there are like five questions here. Sure, wait, sure, okay. sure. One at a time. Stop, stop. All right, so okay. deal with the problem of, so I asked you a direct question. Are, wouldn't there be people betting on the event that the child not reach that threshold of, of, of success that you think they might? That you, like, let's say that, you know, you, I, I, bet, I only bet that people have good outcomes. Surely there's other actors who, who don't bet that fashion and who bet the other way around. No, so, okay, so the way that it would work mechanistically is um, people would, so there, there would be a sort of stock-esque things where people get a certain percentage of the income of the child over the course of their life. So the, com- so the, the companies Sorry, would... What? Uh, so the, the, wait, wait, so this is something separate. So what you're saying is that no, this, there's going to be residual better. claims okay. on cash flows from the child? Does the child have any say in... In... This is literally exploitation of children. Yeah, I mean, it's, like, it, no, it's, you're it's, saying it's that we have to garnish their wages. It's, it's Wait, crazy. No, it is, this is not exploitation in that they are paid out by the government. The child does not pay at all, and they're only paid out when they're an adult. So the, the only person who it's costing is taxpayer money. Um, right? Well, so, so are people betting against the child? I mean, you can no, short stock. I, I, you can, I, you can I, sell I, stock so the, the, the value goes down. You can short it. For other people. Right. So people pay money and then they get a percentage of the income that the child would pursue over the. Um, and then, so, re, rel, so whether, the pri, whether the price of the stock in the child would go up or down and after the child is separated from their parents would determine if a separation occurs. So as a result, uh, there would be an incentive for people to figure out if a separation would be, you know, a good way, w- would improve the long term quality of life of the child. And then to only bet for how it. How does the betting affect the ultimate dispositive decision on how, where the child ends up? So, I mean, what, how does the betting market affect what the decision is with respect to the child? Yeah, whichever one is uh, rated as higher by the betting market. What do you mean, whichever would, one? So, so there, there right. So there is a betting market where they, so. So there would be a, a cost for the share of the child's income or not, not income. This is, it's not just, you, you build this as like stocks in the child, but now you're saying that there's stocks in a particular treatment of the child. So, so which one is it? Is it, yes. is it a residual Wait. claiming on future cash flows from the child's it, success it is, or it is, is it a- in the child? If a policy passes, there would be a second stock 
in the child. If, so, if it doesn't, if, are you bullshitting? I mean, this is, it sounds like you're just invented. You didn't t- talk about second stock. So now there's two different security what? type things. And on, Dude, like, I, you'll read the chat. Like, it, that's currently going on right now. So maybe he has an understanding of what he's saying. So, um, Amanda, just so you know, if you could pull on headphones, because every time we unmute, we hear like a feedback um, from the stream. Uh, or from from this, so just put on uh, headphones. Um, so there's and, two security. Oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, go go ahead, Peace Go. Then I actually want to let Kobe in afterwards. Okay. Um, yeah. There's two securities. So what you're telling me is there's an overall investment in the child's future cash flows based based on how the indicators are, which I guess are redeemable when the child reaches 18. No, I mean, you didn't tell me. And then there's an uh, is another tradable or betting market in what the actual treatment is towards the child? I, I'm not understanding this. Yeah, so there would be one, so there, there, so there would be a, a, a stock in the child um, if relative to it, if they get separated versus if they don't get separated. So, so are they two separate stocks? So, so one is, so I'll, I'll put all my, my brownie points in separation for, the, for this particular child. Um, Right. It would be two separate stocks. So people would estimate what the income of the child would be. They would they would have a share in the child um, if the child gets separated. And then there would also be another share if the child does not get separated. Whichever one is estimated by the stockholders um, to result in a greater you know, long-term quality of life for the child would be the thing that passes. But, but, but now we have a problem. So what about everyone who's bought in this security for the other one that the, the minority stockholders will say in this other pathway, do right, they, so, they go to zero because they just got bought out. Well, no, I, I mean, so, so the, 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 the purchase of the stock would be, so I, if you were betting on a world and then that world does not happen as a result of the, of it getting uh, 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 so like if, if I place bets on what will happen if the child um, is not separated and then the child is separated then I would get my money back. Get your you money back. You would get your money back? Then well, yeah, if I'm betting on a thing and that thing ends up not happening. Is then... that how casinos work? You you, you fail no your bet. You you, you get just your money back. The incentive. Yeah. There's no risk. There's no risk. There's never. No, what's the risk? Well, well, no, there is a risk because so there is a probability that that the child will get separated. There is a probability that the child will not have, get separated. Investors the and the, and the by the way, the only way that's decided upon, there is no wait, factor wait. that takes into consideration on separation other than the perceived the, the value of the stock as pe- as investors are are doing. So you can see a lot of manipulation here, right? Let's say that no one knows about your child and you're just a rich guy. You can. You can pump up whichever stock you want, can't you? I mean, that's a separate issue, but uh, and, and, wait. And, and, and one well, other thing. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. I, I actually want to address that because okay. kind of a pretty good objection. Okay, so so in terms of concerns about market manipulation, generally there's a good economic reason to think that there would not be market manipulation, and the reason is because if if someone else is trying to manipulate the market, then I can get a lot of money. By betting against the guy trying to manipulate the market because he's making irrational bets, which is why in lab experiments you consistently find, uh, the, for for instance, in in futures markets. How can um, you make more money? He's just going to get all. His, you just told me he's going to get all his money back, right? Well, there's no. no I mean, wait, there's no risk, and, and it wouldn't matter because if I don't have enough capital, some threshold of capital, I can't overcome him, and he essentially outvotes me because it's just I don't know, fifty percent plus one. Wait, it makes yeah, it easier. votes you. What if he outvotes you? Then his if he's bet is if he's placing investments on a particular state of the world, and he outvotes you, then that state of the world would occur. Okay, so what if I what if I invest a billion dollars into one potential? I mean, I mean, what happens if I'm right? I mean, you get a lot of money if you from who? Right. So, so the, the the you know from the government. So the government. So a child makes out pretty well. You know, he he has a nice life. He makes eight hundred. You know, uh, sorry, eighty thousand dollars a year, and and I bet a billion dollars on that outcome. Who's paying that out? Um, it sounds like you haven't really thought about this. At all? Well, no. I mean, I, I, I have, I have thought about it for, for a few, for like minutes. 20 minutes. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's one of the dumber things I've heard said on this panel. <laughs> oh man. Uh, I mean, well, there's like multiple uh, securities owners understands how it works. Like, is there a cap to how much you're allowed to bet? 
because there's not if a there's cap a, how much you're allowed to bet. Like, okay, if there's not a cap on how much you're allowed to bet, then then surely there's a big fiscal drain. Anytime there's a there a lot, you know, it's not very very unlikely for a child to succeed reasonably well. And it sounds like it's uncapped fiscal problems for your state yeah, or whatever so, municipality. So, the, so the the percentage of the money that they would get would be such that it's on average only about an average return on investment. Okay, an average. Okay, so sorry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, oh boy, don't worry, Pisco, we'll, we'll get you back in here. I'll let some of the other people in. I, but before that, I just have one question, right? Because part of what affect, right, the outcome of like whether a child is taken from the family. One, oh my God, like the incentives for like, um, uh, for child services, right? Like <laughs> the incentives for them, for instance, to not take away a child from an abusive family, amazing, right? <laughs> so, um, like, Okay, but beyond that, we take away Whoa. children uh, for abuse. So, wouldn't that abuse be a factor? And so, wouldn't investors want details of the abuse of the children? Is that part of the details that would be shared? Yeah, investors would get details about what's going on with Great. the child. Thank you. Child. Uh, Kobe. Okay. Um, I just want to make a quick clarification. Um, is the person you're citing uh, uh, is overcoming bias, Robin Hanson? Yes. Okay. Okay. So I was looking at a couple of the uh, of this man's other ideas. It's a very interesting world. I'm just going to. I, I would like to give it up to Nine Tails. I feel like for a bit. I'm just going to paint so, so, you a I, picture of I, what Robin Hanson wants very quickly. Just very briefly. Just two wait, things. Are you going to cite the article? Because I. Well, no, no. So I'm, I'm signing his article from 2014 called Why Not Egg Futures, where he talks about how women, there could be like a, like, like a stock market for women where they could sell their eggs. And then like, I guess you could buy, it says like, hold on, it says right here, hold on. Oh, Such wow. women might be helped by an egg future business paid to take on the risk, this risk for them. Such a business could buy eggs from women when they are young, freeze them and sell them back to these women when they are old. What a and then he has another proposal. one called... What a modest <laughs> <on>. proposal. <laughs> Okay, there, there's Wait, this good I, one here. I need to read the article, but I'll, I find I'll read Robin. Robin. I just want to leave another one. I just, I just I, pulled I, it up. Okay. I find Robin Hansen says pretty hilarious things much of the time that are often I bet. interesting. Okay. Um, so uh, th th to celebrate Pride Month, I'll end up with this. Celebrate Pride Month. He has an article called Gays as Foragers. And he says, attitudes towards gays and poly uh, polygamists offer an interesting contrast. Gay sex was illegal not that long ago, while po uh, polyamorous sex has long been legal. Yet today, gay marriage is much closer to being legal than poly polyamorous marriage. Save the children is one of the main arguments against polyamory. Young girls were supposed to be uh, unfairly persecuted uh, to marry or uh, persuaded to marry uh, boys. Yet boys seduced by gays fail today to motivate such a save the children impulse. Okay, this guy, this guy's insane. Okay. This guy's a crazy guy. This guy's a crazy guy. Maybe you're not a crazy guy, but this guy's a crazy guy. So maybe if I, I'm going to guess if you got two crazy opinions, I'm going to guess the third opinion is also a crazy opinion. And since we've been talking about it, and it seems like again, like I looked it up, and it seems like the best uh, child welfare system is in Sweden, Iceland, Estonia, and Portugal. I'm going to I'm going to go out on a limb and say that they don't have a free market for child welfare. You know, free range children in these countries. It seems like a centralized Whoa. system has the best results, right? So so we'll, well, wait, but are there any systems that do have a market system, a market for children that fail? Oh boy. Uh, well, yes, yeah, Somalia. So Somalia, right? So Somalia is like a warlord oh. and an and cap state, uh, or at least it was before 2011. Uh, and uh, I'm going to go on a limb and say that it's probably not great to wait. be a kid in Somalia. A, a, I'm not an ANCAP. B, well, yeah, but free market are, for children is the question, right? Well, B, there are other obvious reasons as to why Somalia is not doing well. One of them is like they have pirates, um, and like they have no centralized. That is not okay. Stop! No, stop! No. Okay, so so uh, we're gonna go to uh, uh, Wick. Uh, we're not talking about pirates. And then Chris, uh, who's been waiting very patiently. I I I honestly don't what? know what to say other than that your idea is to have not just anyone could bet but an elite group of investors being able to make bets on the success or the failures of children this is sure. straight out of some sci-fi dystopian no not like the failures because you don't you don't lose anything if, you, if, if you're wrong i, I just don't understand yeah. like i Wait, get that i get that, okay I, I will say this i get that you're you're throwing out ideas okay and i get that and, and we should just dismiss an idea out of hand but the more we talk about this, the more 
reasons there are to dismiss it that come out. So it's just a, it's just a shit idea. That's all. Wait, it's not risky though. But, but, but Omni, can you clear that up? I mean, you if you bet on a policy and and you it's not the policy that wins, you don't lose anything, do you? Well, no. So so you're well. It depends on how we're using the word wins. So you make bets about what the income or income in air quotes really like a weighted measure of quality of life the child will be if the policy passes versus if the policy does not pass sorry when i say if the policy passes versus if the policy does not pass i mean if the you know child gets separated versus if the child does not get separated so then if the child gets separated when my bet was only about what would happen if the child does not get separated well then i don't gain or lose but if i make but if i say if the child gets separated this will be really bad but it ends up being really good after the child is separated then oh now you have you've just introduced another variable Mm -hmm. because now you've just said that there are two outcomes and you can bet pro or negative on either outcome you've just increased the number of possible bets by two i i've been you understand that right I no, I I've, I've been clear on this from the beginning, right? So you, you haven't it. been clear on it. You said that there were two what? securities. Now there's clearly four, right? Wait, no, sorry. To be clear, there are not four securities. There is betting over the price of the initial securities. So if I spend a lot of money on the initial security and bet that your, you know, weighted measure of quality of life, let's say, will be a million, let's say that that's quantified in rough measures, but it actually ends up being five hundred thousand. Well, given that the amount that I put in will be a would be the amount that I would have put in if it were worth a million, I would be expected to lose money. So if I make bad predictions about what is best for the child, then I lose money. So you, it's, it's about trying to match what they actually turn out to be? You're trying to match? Yes. Okay, so you're, try, you're trying to match, and so you say that I think the child's going to make $30,000. That would be a, a fair bet, right? A year? And of course, yeah. right now we're only talking about money because that makes it easier for you. Because before you said there, it was a very profound measure of well-being and that we were going to include not just money. And, but now it sounds right. like everything is money. So how, it's, uh, it's, it's complicated it's, with it's money. Not, how are you going to introduce other, it, other variables? It's, of- it's, not, it's not just money. You would look at other factors. Uh, so so as, like what? I mean, how are you going to reduce that to? They, such as how they subjectively rate their quality of life. Like their health, I guess. I, I don't know. You're just <laughs> tons of oh, no, this is Think about how many lawsuits there will be for for investment bankers or whoever who's helping invest into these resources. How many lawsuits and transaction costs there will be? And how much wasted effort and breath there will be on accusations of tampering, on monitoring costs to make sure that children aren't lying on their forms, there. to to have pencil pushers and and lawyers check over and revise all these markets. Yeah, You're not considering the big picture. There are so many suits. Oh, well, one like you would not be able to. Sue children like uh, you wouldn't if they lie on a form. What if they lie? Of course you can. Yeah, they're eighteen and they're like, I'm having a horrible time. Your security is now worthless. Oh, oh, sorry. When they're when they're eighteen, maybe they would. I don't know. I mean, I don't know all the the metrics that we would use. I mean, maybe you just use income. I don't know. So Um, the government forces you to answer a survey, right? Because because you don't you can't opt out, right? And so now now you're forced to. Okay, sure. We can we can just look at income because I think income is a pretty good. Okay, so now we're just so everyone be clear. The only thing we're worried about for child well being for the for the the sake of these securities is income. That's it. That's it. And you think that income properly represents outcomes for children? Are you insane? I think that income is a pretty good heuristic. I mean, there might be other things that we could include, but it's it's hard to think of them off the top of my head. Ask my buddies in law firms whether income is a good heuristic for happiness and outcomes. Wait, sorry, I didn't hear what you said. Ask anybody in this world whether they think happiness and money are coextensive. Sure, there's some threshold between... Really, I mean, ha- happiness and money are not coextensive. Happiness stops correlating with money very much at incomes above $70,000. So, so it sounds like you're maximizing <laughs> it's a heuristic, right? So, no, I don't think... I, I don't think... Do you guys all think... I mean, right now, I mean, all we have is income. I, I would like to test that heuristic. Uh, let's run an experiment. I have a PayPal button below. Um, we can find out if income's over $70,000. Uh, do you make a person happier? We, I think it's important 
an experiment we need to run right now. Um, so, <laughs> okay, don't worry, Pisco. We're gonna get back to you, right? I still let some a few. He's in trouble. I know, I know. <laughs> He's in very much in trouble. Um, <laughs> uh, 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 Sunny. Hey, Omni. Um, are you Canadian? No, not oh, that I know. Amer are American then? I am American. Okay, cool. So, um, I, do you remember what we were talking about when you jumped in here? Um, Catholic Church and the I, I, sex abuse scandal. Wow. I have so a working a solution to that. What we were talking about. No, see, uh, we're talking about reparations for indigenous people. Um, after a mass grave was found in Kamloops, BC, of 215 dead indigenous children from residential schools. And so that's what we were talking about. Then uh, Amanda brought up how uh, atro atrocities are still being committed today by child care services. Um, and to speak uh, in a Canadian context, it has been proven and there are settlements being paid out. In fact, in Canada, um, over 50% of children in the foster care system are Indigenous, while uh, seven of our uh, population, seven percent of our population is Indigenous. You know, we can see that's a little that's a little off. Now, I want to go back to what you said about income being um, a good, a great, a great uh, determinant of happiness or a great signifier of happiness. So, lucky you, you get to talk to a survivor of the foster care system in Canada. Right here, Nine Tails. Thank you so much, Nine Tails, for showing up. This is a very, I'm sure, a very intimate topic for you. Um, and I want to give you that space. And so I'd like to ask, um, maybe Chris, want to wait for a second if Nine Tails can talk or make it like a little fast? Because I think, oh, okay, no, she's, she has many times. she's not ready. Anyway, but I'm sure she'll have something to say. But um, I'm a little grossed out that you... I spent so much time coming in here to talk about this new system where we're gonna we're gonna bet on children to make them happier, and that uh, their income when they become an adult is how we decide if they were happy or not during that time. So um, I want to push back and say that I think if you took uh, two children who grew up in the foster care system who were taken away from their families and child services, and they both grew up to make the exact same income. Let's say whatever income that is. Let's say they're billionaires, right? Oh, no, excuse me. Sorry. One of them's billionaire. The other one, they're impoverished, right? However, both of these kids were abused under this system. Do you think the billionaire is still fine? that they were abused in that system? Do you think all the money made it better? Oh, uh, no, I think abuse is bad. Um, uh, uh, could you do me a favor, just do me a favor, Omni? Um, we can hear everything that happens when you're like tossing things around. Oh, gonna, we hear oh, all of shit, that. Right. All of I that. It was me. So, yeah, okay, sure. Um, but, okay. Um, so we can acknowledge that abuse is, <laughs> abuse is bad whether you're rich or, or poor, all right? Good, so that doesn't, that part, all right. Um, so we've established that, okay. Uh, let's, let's go to Chris and then, and then Ninetales, um, and then maybe back to Pisco, because I know he's chomping at the bit. <laughs> Chris. Yeah, um, Ugly Pie kind of brought up what I was going to say. Like, we were having a serious discussion that was like, it, it, we were having an interesting conversation about what was going on. And like, uh, we have someone jump in and give some galaxy brain take about like betting on children, having a free market system for like the outcomes of children. I, I don't know. Um, like, I guess this is because panels, uh, I mean, uh, Prime's panel is what it is. It's a place for people to come and debate. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that like you shouldn't pay attention to what the topic was, and you just like you know come in and throw in some like some some take that you like haven't even really thought that much of, and just want to like derail whatever conversation we're having with. I don't know. But it, 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 it like this conversation it was like scatterbrained i don't think anybody really understands what just happened here right nobody like it, it was it, this take was completely insane and like we just completely cut off some interesting like topics we could have branched off from to like go into this which made like no sense uh i'm pretty sure the audience is just sitting here like what the hell is going on and like only pisco like was really able to break this down and like tell us like what is really wrong with what he's saying and like yes we can all pull out like little small things but like it's just like 
What? Hold on, hold on, hold on. First of all, stop that. Uh, I actually yeah. want to explore his idea, right? Um, so I think this is very interesting. Um, this is a fascinating yeah, point of view. Um, it, yeah, no, excuse, me, so file, excuse me. Excuse me. Don't want to fucking be here. Get the fuck out. Like, no, seriously, get the fuck out. Yeah. You got a problem? Get the fuck out. I'm, I'm, I want to explore this idea. So if you have a problem with that, get the fuck out. No more snide comments. Okay, good. No more snide fucking comments. Thank you. All right. Um, yeah, moving uh, on. Sorry. Gonna, F- are you done? I was going to say I was glad Pisco was here because if he wasn't, I don't think many of us like could really grasp the like the, what exactly he was saying or really could push back on every single thing that was going. That was well, I don't think said. he understands quite what he's saying because he's changed it a couple t- multiple times already. Before we were we were told that this was a it was going to be a um, holistic measure of well-being that was going to include things other than income. Now we're told it only includes income. And but it doesn't even make sense if you just say income because it, money at one point isn't equal to money at other points. Anyone who has had any time in finance or economics knows about discounted cash flow analysis and how money in the future is worth less than money now. Um it, it stuns me that we would think about cutting off the potential um outcomes in terms of income only at like 18 or 20 many people don't make their break until later in life you don't know are are we gonna is this security gonna be a 65 70 year security that that totally encapsulates the working life of an individual what is going on here with your income it makes no sense you haven't specified and you've already changed from being a holistic measure to now solely income and I want everyone to have heard that because that was a big shift for me. Um, and so now I want to hear more about where did the security cut off? Where does the income analysis stop? Because you're discount. I mean, if it's just income, right? Why would you go be a doctor if it cuts off at 25? You know, doctors have to go to school for a long time. Lawyers have to go to school. Does it make sense to stop at 18, 19, 20, 21, 22? It sounds like you're pushing yeah, for short-term returns. Uh, you know, you, you become a manager at some some restaurant. That's better than going into debt for five years to become a doctor. Does this make any sense? Yeah, so, I mean, the, like, there's not a cutoff point. It is income over the course of your... So, when do you mean when there's not it, a cutoff When's the payout? When does the payout yeah. happen? You know, like every year, they get a payoff that is some small percentage of your income. So they get dividends. So, so every yeah. single person in the United States has a market for residual returns on their income, and the government not only will be paying those dividends out to investors, they will be monitoring to make sure that there is no fraud. They will be uh, for all these claims of. You know how easy, how hard it is to have a working tax code and people, how they shift around income, sure. they turn it into it capital gains. Tax Does it make code. sense to you to impose these transactional costs and monitoring costs with respect to income and, and, and have dividends, residual returns for every single American? You think that's efficient? It is not for every single American. It is only for who are involved in the, in potentially in the foster care system. Um, like anyone is potentially involved. So, so only people. I mean, there would have are... to be a there would have to be a specific investigation no, for no, it to be on the radar. You've already, you've already fucked up because look, you, it has to be for. So if they're already in the foster care system, they've been separated, right? So the the whole bet is about separation and about income. So if they're already in the foster care system, well then there's there's a there's a problem. So they're already saying, separated. Yeah. So so. so if, so there would be an investigation that would be done um, by the by the government agency whose name I'm blanking on again. Child um, protection child services. protective services. Yeah. Fuck, I just can't remember the name. Child protective services for some reason. Um, so there would be an investigation done by them. They would collect evidence, and then you would set up a system where there was, you know, the betting system with dividends relative to if they get separated versus if they don't get separated. All the problems about potential corruption already exist in the current system. And there's no reason why corruption would be expected to be greater. It were more of a privatized system. And, but under this current system, 
what um don't try to escape with general corruption here what what i'm i haven't mentioned general corruption what i'm asking you is why would you invest form? if all you're entitled to sir if all you're entitled to sir is a residual claim on like seventy thousand dollars you make a year who, how would why would big money invest in that kind of uh that kind of cash flow it doesn't make sense for them to to spend all the money to do research on children if all they're entitled to are claims by the residual claims on the, uh, from the children why would they go through all the the costs and and problems of of seeking research you don't understand how do you understand how much it costs yeah, to hire someone yeah. like me later on to do like a legal research into one issue it's a lot of money if you want any competent research done and so why would anyone invest on such a, a scant amount of money? Obviously, not everyone would invest. The type of people who you would expect to invest would be people who have accurate and reliable information about the subject you can expect to beat the market. It, it wouldn't be big firms, I'll tell you that. It's too little return for them. I mean, would it, it would be... Well, wait, well, how large the rate of refer return is would be contingent on what percentage of the money of the children they get later in life. Well, but, okay, see if you can walk this through me. People, individuals, in terms of general income, especially kids probably who are in these situations where they have had maybe hard backgrounds, aren't likely to make a ton of return for big firms. You would agree with that, right? Any uh, individual, I mean, right? In terms of like wages, yeah, well, they're not going to make they, a lot of money. They, they, well, it, the, the rate of return would be contingent on the amount invested, obviously, right? So, I mean, if it were one penny and for in exchange for that, that they got 10% of the income. So I'll ask again. So, I'll ask again. Suppose I bet a billion dollars that little Timmy is going to make $80,000. I don't know, throughout when? I mean, you, the bets, uh, now the bets, since they don't have an end date, I don't even know what, that, what makes sense. It, it, since since, since there's, no, there's no payoff date, what's the bet? The so you pay money, and then in exchange for the money that you paid, you get a share, you get a percentage of the person's income over the course of so their life. This is not a bet. Right? So, this is not a bet. Well, is, it's a bet in the sense that, like, uh, I don't know that that buying any stock is a bet. Yeah. So presumably, you're entitled to some greater <laughs> dividend if the guy's income or the the child's income goes up. But now it sounds like those aren't distinguished on the basis of the treatment that you apply at t, at t equals zero. May I ask something? So oh, no, no, hold on. Uh, we well, one at a time. Don't worry. We'll, we'll get to everyone. All right. Well, well actually, we might not get to everyone. Um, there would but, be. But okay. Wait, sorry. Can I just say one well, one respond, really quick respond thing? To that. Respond to what Pisco said. Yeah, there would be a separate. So there would be betting on what the expected income would be, or rather, so there would be a, a price for the stock, um, in the share for the share of the per child's income. Um, if they get separated, and then there would also be a price of the share if the child um, uh, does not get separated from their parents. And so as a result, and then whichever one had a higher stock price would be the thing that happened. Okay, so, so what you're telling me is some kind of initial public offering that's outcome determinative on the treatment that's applied to the child. That I understand, okay? Uh, though I guess everyone's incentive would be to sit out. Like, why would you... Why would you spend money and lock yourself in to their to to this stock at time equals zero? It, it, are you limited to when you can buy this stock? It has to be before a decision is made on treatment. Yeah, you would have to buy it before a decision. So you can't yeah. sell it. So you're losing a lot of efficiencies in terms of the of the market if if people have different you know, risk assessments I mean, I, and I, I, you're I, locking now. You, you you're buying it and you're stuck with it, aren't you? You can't I mean, sell. I mean, it. The initial purchase would have to happen before a treatment's done in order to determine what the what 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 the share of the child's income would be. But then I guess after the fact, you know, you sell it. Sell the stock. Uh, okay. Uh, what if you put what if you spend a uh, there's no, this is uncapped, right? It's uncapped. So what if you want to spend a billion dollars on a on a share of uh, on a bet for a child? Is it uncapped? You can bet as much as you want? Yeah. Yeah. So now, so a child, it's, it sounds like a, like a big bubble here, buddy, because what you got is the child, whatever their ceiling of income is going to be, is probably going to be what? If they're lucky, low six figures, right? And now you've bet a billion dollars on some child reaching or not reaching some arbitrary threshold. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And so who pays out the 
the billion the plus injury. So the, the government, government does that. Yeah, the government. That's does. yeah. It, that that what? seems like um very stupid from a fiscal perspective huh. that you would well, yeah it would cost leave money. yourself <laughs> cost money. on the whims of of some child you have to pay out to 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 some guy who colludes and coordinates with the child to make sure that they or even offers them a job at that money right let's say that you make a bet for a billion dollars you could just offer them a job at a hundred thousand dollars that w- w- would that be illegal the child would have to remain and so they could they could know that this the child but they would not ha- be able to know when does the payout pay- happen so i bet a billion dollars when do i get my money you get a percentage each year of the child's income Okay, but the the child dies, uh, so I get a percentage. Of, I get my twenty dollars every year. That's for you, and I'll save for the child, presumably. Wait, wait, wait. So, uh, so the child makes an income over the course of his life. He gives me about twenty dollars a year. That's what I'm entitled to, let's say. And then he dies. Now what? I bet a billion dollars. Right. Well, then you're out a large portion of. You said the government was going to give me my money back, right? No, the government. No, the government only gives you your money back if the policy, if the the change in policy relative to the child does not occur. Okay, then why would a billion dollars? What? Would anyone bet a billion dollars? So the risk is that they don't die. Right. If 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 they die, then then they lose a lot of money. So they have an incentive. Well, one that gives them an incentive to figure out the situation. There's not enough money. There's not enough money. No, no, no no smart investor is gonna. What you're talking yeah, about is is very silly and stupid because it's not enough money to intrigue anybody. It's too little money. You're talking about wages. You cannot you cannot assess a priori whether it is too little money. If it's we do not too little that. money. You're talking about a subset of a sub. You're talking about the the so, wages and income of of children who are selected in, in in problematic places, and you're saying that that could be a lucrative place for institutional elites to invest. They're not going to do that. It's too, so it's too the little. The reason the reason why you cannot figure out a priori if it will be too little money is because the amount of money. So they pay an amount of money, and then they also get a percentage of the child's income. Obviously, the profitability is continuing both on the amount that they have to pay and on the percentage of the child's income. The amount that would be doled out would be estimated to make it a reasonable t- return on investment that would grow, that would produce a rate of return at about... Oh, it's uncapped, it's, it's, it's uncapped spending because if, I bet it, if I'm really, really positive this child is going to make whatever money I want, I'm just going to bet a, a crap ton of money. I, I, will, I will get my friends to hire him if that's what it takes. And then the no, government's paying me. You can't get your friends to hire him because the child huh. remains anonymous. How, how would you know? The child remains anonymous? Well, but you need you information to make bets. You know that the child's condition, but you don't know the name of the child. So now you're not making info, informed betting decisions. You don't know. You can't look them up. You can't uh, get information. Uh, so what's going on here? All you have is what? What information do betters have? But the black I, box, isn't it? It, it is not just a some random people you don't, you can't check up on. You can't send your investigators in. To, 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 it's not a lot of money anyway, so you would never do that anyway. But so. well, no. So so in terms of the, the claim about not raising a lot of whether it raises money would obviously be contingent on the way on the rate of return. What um, do you mean on the rate of return? What do you mean by it? it's contingent on the so, rate of return? Explain it yeah, to where. Okay. So so let's imagine that it was one dollar, and in exchange for that one dollar, they got fifty percent. It was one dollar. Say, well, say what you mean. It was it was one dollar. Imagine it, it was is $1. the percentage of the income. So they pay one dollar, and yeah. in exchange for that, who's they, they? Have, who's they pay one dollar? The government. The, the the government or the investor who's paying? You don't yeah. use pronouns. Just say, tell me what is going on. <laughs> the investor pays one dollar. Okay. And so when the investor pays $1, imagine that they get 50% of the income paid by the government. What do you mean they get 50% of the income? What do you mean 50% the, of the, they get 50, a dollar gets them 50% the of is here, okay? It is 50% of the income of the child. So you, so $1 would entitle you to 50% of, I mean, that's a wonderful bet. I mean, you're going to, I, yes. I would pay a dollar for a chocolate bar. Wait, this That's the point, right? The point is that, the question of whether it would be profitable to bet would be a question it would be contingent on how much it costs to get a stock and it would also be contingent on what percentage of the income that they who get who sells the stock yeah which stock 
The stock and the child. It? Okay. Okay. Sorry. Um, hold on. We'll, we'll get back. We'll get back to this. Oh, don't worry, Pisco. We'll get back to this. Um, uh, but I just, there's one thing I, I want to point out because you said it before, right? You said uh, before you were talking about this info, right? Um, and who, what would have to be handed over? I asked you specifically about this, about the abuse, right? So investors would have to have some knowledge, even if it's anonymized knowledge, right? And I, I don't know how you would keep that anonymized, but okay, sure, right? Anonymized knowledge of abuse of individuals. So uh, Pisco is doing a much better job of breaking down the uh, realities of the financial market better than <laughs> I ever could, right? So, and I thank you, Pisco. Um, but I'm looking at the realities of this. I'm imagining, right, Wall Street, right? The, the bastions of empathy known as Wall Street. I'm imagining uh, uh, those guys, you know, the ones who like have parties where they dress up as individual uh, minorities, right? Um, like in their, uh, in like blackface and brownface and yellowface, right? Uh, and, and they take pictures and they talk about like how inferior those guys are, right? And how they're winning. I imagine them with portfolios of abused children, right? And wondering what they would do, what fun they would have with that with the anonymized abused children, right? That they're betting on. This sounds like, this sounds amazing. It's just amazing. All right, um, Nine Tails. Yeah, forgive me if I'm wrong, but what this person uh, is saying, and I, I was in and out of that because I was trying to look at actual papers on Aboriginal youth and foster care, unlike some of us here, apparently. Um, I sounded like I would have been something yeah. like an indebted to the people who paid for my foster care growing up and literally i wouldn't be able to make as much money as the people around me for doing the same amount of effort so literally i'd be punished by this economic system by having my wages garnered for being a foster care that's just what it sounds like i might have gotten that wrong moving on uh it seems like one of the, i just want to point out that the two biggest uh things that are different when the uh, child care system here in Canada uh, assesses uh, cases to do with Aboriginal kids versus Caucasian kids is that uh, cases that are seemingly similar between the two will be deemed more substantiated and more, uh, I think the term they used was completed uh, for Aboriginal children. Or so, sorry, they were completed before they had all the information and were more likely to be like incomplete is what I meant to say. And so uh, it seems like uh, it, it seems like there is like a lot of systemic discrimination there that's creating this feedback loop, a generational feedback loop where, you know, they, they're trying to get out of their, their social poverty and we keep on reinforcing it. Definitely going through group homes uh, as a kid put me through social economic poverty that like extended well into my mental health, my well-being. I had to rebound from all of the medications that I was put on so I would behave, even though my behavior was uh, a product of my environment, not my actual labels, quote unquote. So they were basically doping me up. And then when I quit those meds, cold turkey, because I tried to commit suicide with them when I turned 18, I basically dealt with five or six years of withdrawals and having to like regain my sense of self and uh, self-actualization and stuff like that, not to mention actually learning how to function as an adult because they put me through what you would call like an independent living home from the age of 17 to 18. But guess what? I was literally too traumatized to take in any of the information to retain it like a few months later. So uh, as far as these environments go, they're terrible environments. Privatization or not, we should be finding ways around this. We should be finding better ways to, aside from abusive group home, uh, aside from abusive households, that's a whole different beast. But like when it comes to kids who can't behave or something like that, there's there's got to be better ways than just institutionalizing them like they did with me. Um. All right. Uh, KTN. Oh, sorry. Let's give um um, uh, let's give Omni a chance to reply. Okay, so uh, the first, so, okay, so Prime brought up Wall Street having portfolios. Um, I, I, I may just be missing something. Things Wall Street would do with anonymous portfolios of people. Like, I mean, it's like what, what harm they would do to the child. Um, in terms of, of you being indebted, you would not be indebted given that it would be paid out purely by the government. Um, 
the fact that Aboriginal children are largely abused in the current system and are sent into foster care in ways that are often unjust and separate them from their families and force them to endure massive amounts of physical and psychological violence is not a reason as to why we should keep the current system. It's a reason as to why an alternative system is better if it has the best interest of the children in mind because it does people with a financial incentive to figure out what is best uh, for the children. And so I think that if the environment is terrible, so, then they would have an incentive not so, to So hold on. Uh, I want to address that, uh, your response to me, right? So uh, what harm is done if I put a camera in a woman's bathroom and record them? I mean, they don't know, right? So, uh, and you know, I, I put it up for other people to enjoy. They don't know that that's happened. So what, what's, what's harm? What he's harm already discounted done? privacy interests. I mean, he's already said that yeah. the, the children and families deserve no privacy recognition. I mean, he's already said that, right? Yeah. The same, pri the same privacy interests are already being violated by the government. Uh, it, no, they're well, not. They send, no, in all these court cases, it's like, uh, you know, A versus B. You know, or, or whenever there's a, a child that they, they put anonymous names. And now it's the, I'm sure that there are problems with anonymity and privacy. I'm sure that exists in, in spades, but it's not a open market where people and children are compulsively are, are in order to work. They have to, they're forced to give over information to the government for, uh, for the use of private actors in betting markets. And you don't have a problem with that. You have to tell. Uh, you have to sign and say, "I feel happy today," or I guess not anymore because it's just money. So whatever. But um, you don't. Ha you don't have an interest in those privacy concerns, and you've already discounted them because you're forcing individuals to give over their information to private actors for you. I mean, I, I I don't know what you nefarious things. But the reason you don't. I mean, I think like I, I think it's hard for me not to think of nefarious things. They just start flowing in my mind in, in terms of. Well, Think about okay. like how many insider trading cases there well, are. Why don't we share the nefarious things so that they're not just flowing in your mind? I, I'm happy to. So having <laughs> access to sensitive nefarious. information for children that can be reverse engineered, or if you know somebody in what, whoever's providing that information, that can, that, that can very much for a, a better who has a lot of financial – if there is a lot of money to be made here – if, if what you're suggesting is true, is that that I'm wrong, that there it's not just peanuts and there's actual a lot of money and robust amounts of capital here that will affect substantially and will will make things more efficient. If that's the case, then presumably there's a lot of incentives on the part of private actors to reverse engineer and say and and you you think that information is private. Um, I'm sorry, but if if you have to constantly check back with these children to see what their income levels are, you don't think there's tons of room for market manipulation for leaks for all the things you say won't happen also they should get, get real. the government just to pay for it you might as well just government. get the government to pay for foster care to yeah. begin with there's no point of this in between if government's paying for it anyway and all the monitoring well, that hasn't addressed yet all the police that. activity you need to have people to regulate this market to assess claims it's a mess it's a mess you um, haven't thought of it I've worked in CTS. So, um, so, so I'm sorry, we'll, we'll get, and we'll get to you. Um, uh, before that, uh, actually, Jai has been waiting for a while. So Jai, go ahead. Yeah, so, uh, uh, I mean, going back to the original topic, when we were talking about, you know, indigenous issues and CPS within, I guess, Canada, but uh, it would apply to the states as well. I mean, uh, like a year and six months ago, we set up, give me one second. The uh, we set up the act respecting First Nations, Inuit, and Metis children, youth, and families, uh, January 1st of 2020, and that was an attempt to give sovereignty back to the indigenous territories in an effort to try and uh limit, like, like as as Sunny said earlier, uh, indigenous people make up 52 percent of the people in child protective services. Yeah, they're four percent of the of the population, and like that's just that's trying to like uh, pull the lever back so we don't have as big an issue. Yeah, uh, that's about all I got right now. Okay, um, let's go to KTN, um, and then uh, uh, Kobe. Yeah, so I mean, I'm kind of late to this party, but um, in now when you talk about privatizing the um, foster care system or CPS. 
Um, do you understand the logistical nightmare that CPS already is? And then going out and trying to privatize it. Um, for me to even get my job, I needed a federal background check. Now, if you privatize it, are you going to are you going to take the federal background check out of it? So I don't mm -hmm. think he's private. No, no, he's not privatizing. And you correct me if I'm wrong, but he's, he's not privatizing. Yeah, he's not privatizing it. There's still a government arm, right? Well, he's privatizing. Yeah, um, he's he's marketizing uh, the outcomes of the children who are assessed by uh, child protective services in so, income terms only. Yes. So in, when they're in when a nondescript so, way and how that payout works. So to, so to catch up with the people who have just walked in and had no idea what's going on, I'm going to try to describe this very quickly. Right. Um, so uh, uh, it's going to marketize. So it, when a child is taken um, to be assessed, right, there's a call in uh, for a child. Um, the, uh, a CPS goes to the family, they assess uh, the situation, and th there is a bet at that point, there is a bet as to whether the child will be taken away or, or not taken away. Um, and uh, on the outcomes uh, of, uh, of, the, of the, if they are taken away, I, or maybe both, right? Um, like uh, the, uh, the amount of money the child makes um, after they turn 18. Um, well, and they get a dividend. Well, no, he didn't say after 18. It, 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 at I thought it, it was. continues, right? I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, it, like the, it, it's st they start getting a payout, um, depending on the income from the government, um, after they turn eighteen, um, a dividend of their income. So if they're making a uh, hundred thousand dollars, they get five percent of that, um, a dividend paid by the government. Um, and the point of this, the point of this, and again, correct me. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but the point of this is to encourage, encourage people, uh, with resources right the the powerful to um uh lobby the government for uh for laws and policies uh that will en encourage good outcomes in children wait so but wouldn't that also create kind of a brain drain where the best and the brightest are the best possible students who would make the most profitable money to just go and get taken and then leave the ones with the most problems with their families still creating still having now you have a glut of like 80 percent of those kids staying with their families and then maybe 20 percent of the ones that might make high income will go into these programs and okay let's say they get through everything and let's say they become high earners and okay great but you still haven't helped the other 80 percent of the kids who weren't marketable enough to this um to this scheme basically to make to you know, because when you when when you start telling when you start saying you want to encourage things like this, you're not going to encourage the other eighty percent of those students who still have fundamental problems. Not to say that there's anything wrong with them, but they have problems. To all of a sudden become you know um, the best and the brightest or like high income learners, and the same thing kind of happens. Well, it's high income earners later on. The same thing kind of happens when you do deal with charter schools, where charter schools are like supposed to be this like economic thing. I mean, that's like not this like powerhouse of like, uh, you know, um, of like, uh, you know, uh, Wall Street or whatever. And then they end up not telling you that they offload some of their liabilities, which are the liabilities are the students. You know what I mean? Where if they're not doing good and the school isn't doing great, they just start offloading these kids back into the system. So I don't see how you would somehow think that this system would make more you know, would would create better outcomes in the long run. It would just create a whole other set of divides. Also, it's not just one decision. These these decisions are ongoing. There's there's several hearings. Ooh. What happens if it if circumstances change such that different treatment is ne obviously necessary? Now separation becomes now everyone who's bet on these children are left in the lurch. It makes no sense. And also, the the thought process of having a responsive market it. That doesn't work in this case because by the time you find out whether in the long run it was worth it to apply treatment, the people who made those bets are long dead. They're, you know, if you're 30 year old and you make the bet, you're not responsive to your investments and in what's going on in the future um, for for these other children. So the, the this is a market failure. It doesn't work well to sell these securities. And I, I would like you to address principally though the problem of changed circumstances. How do those figure into your analysis? So many things in life, so many litigation, so many family problems are dynamic. They, they change based on job situations, mental health, different circumstances might affect it differently. What happens if that occurs, if change circumstance require different treatment?
Hello? Yeah. Um, yeah, so, so wait, to, just to clarify the question. So are you asking, like, if, the, if, if there was a changed situation relative let me, to Let me explain plot. to you. So, so these wonderful market makers, these, these people have efficiently priced it and have, they've decided that uh, not separating the child is in the best interest right now. Um, and they've, they've done all that. Everything is great, hunky-dory. Oh, no. Now, a, another thing has happened. The father lost his job and has started being ruthless with the child and, and has started beating the child. Now what, sir? You're in trouble, aren't you? Yes, yeah, so I don't think I'm in trouble. So there would be a separate betting market. Like, the, you know, the, the price of the stock and the child might change in response to new decisions. No, sorry, so sorry. And so I made a bet. I made a bet. Government, government, government. I made a bet on applying this treatment. But, but now, because the kid was getting beaten to a pulp, you change the circumstance. Now it's different. So this bet doesn't hold. So therefore, I'm not liable for anything. Or you have the other people. Uh, no, I mean, no, so, I initially for the other side, and now he's turning out actually very well because you you changed the policy halfway. I should be entitled to that claim, that cash flow. You see the problem with so this? These are ongoing be, situations. I, I bet that the child will be taken away. They were, but then they were reunited afterwards because that happens all the time. Now what? Right. So so when for all of the choices it would all be decided by this. Spreading process. No. This this process. What about existing okay. claims? I already owe. I already paid a bet. If I a change I, happens, if a, if a change happens, you get an existing claim. Um, uh, Come on, so, just say so you don't you, know. You haven't thought about it. It's it, no. It, uh, it I, has I, like, I, I, there's a solution don't here. Don't okay? mean that you know the answer to it. You don't know. Everyone can tell you don't know. Uh, so I, don't I, pretend that you have an answer to this. I think I do have an answer to this, which would be more helpful. Well, so the answer to this is that if you invest in the child, then you get a share of the child's return. If there was another decision to be made, then after the fact, there would be a, sep a second investment in the child. I don't, un I don't understand this because you, you initially took a bet with a condition. You said that you, you had excluded the market after the initial betting. You said these weren't these weren't going to be open uh, afterwards. And and now you know what will happen in the short term. Long term policy can change. You bet yeah, on what the go, results have a good uh, I'll see you later. Bye. Bye. You, you bet on what the result would be for the child if the short if if the change happened in the short term. Longer term changes do not change the initial. Sorry, it could happen in a matter of weeks. Origin. All of a sudden, the decision needs to be undone. It, it would two weeks after. Right, that's a that risk that you're taking to make that. But, no, but you, but 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 what then? I mean, it, it sounds like then these aren't markets that are amenable to to these betting markets. If if it if your bet is extremely elusive and contingent on um, nothing ever changing about whatever. In whatever regulation we or whatever decision or treatment we've applied, that seems like a very poor bet. Any system needs to deal with uncertainty. When you know, under the uh, current system, there's also massive uncertainty. Uh, I'm not, I understand there's uncertainty. You don't need to give me a lecture about uncertainty. What I'm asking okay. you is, what are you entitled to? I mean, you, you had a chance. Yes, to I, I think I've to. explained several times you that you're entitled. You haven't actually you're, explained you're, it. You're, you you're said, entitled. You're entitled to the original terms of the bet that you made. Further changes do not change the original term because the thing that you're betting on is not what policies will change after the fact. It is what what the short-term policy will be. Long-term policy can short change. Short-term policy. You've, you've bet on a treatment at a particular time. That policy might change in a week. It might change in five months. And sure. you're telling me that initially your entitlement to residual claims was dependent upon your treatment being the one that was picked, right? And so, so yes. now... Right, because you told me before, if your treatment isn't picked, then you get all your money back. You did say that, didn't you? Yes. Yes. So your only your treatment title... is not the so. But so we have two. Okay, so let, let let's imagine a simple. You case my, no, try, no, no. I, I'm ans I'm asking you a question. I want an answer. Initially, you had I, said I that if you an answer four times, and you're not no, getting no, the no, answer. I'm so asking you a specific a question case. right now. Didn't you say, sir, that if the treatment 
that you bet on was not chosen, you'd get your money back. You yes. said that, right? Okay. I did. And isn't it the case that treatment, um, the proper treatment that a market might decide or a judge might decide, that could change in the short term, couldn't it? You know, so it might have made sense to not have the child separated initially, and then a week passes, and now it's clear that the child has to be separated. That's correct, isn't it? Right. Okay. So then, aren't there problems with people who make bets on specific treatments if the losers of the initial bet who said, you know, I wanted that treatment applied in the first place, I should be entitled to to that claim, and the people who who are now saying, well, we didn't know about this other change circumstance, therefore we shouldn't have to, we should get our money back too. Who owns what in these circumstances? What are the property entitlements to these securities if the treatment changes? So the thing that the people are entitled to is if they make a prediction. Okay. They, they, All right. They, All right. No, I'm wait, sorry. Sure. Can I can I please just answer the I question? Try, right there? but I don't think you can. All right. I'm ready. I think I can. Okay. So they get a share of the of the 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 person's income. So they they make a prediction. So they say, okay. So if this immediate approach is done, where this child gets separated right now. Here's what I predict. You know, I get if that happens, I get a stock in their income. That immediately happens. They get a stock in their income. Future things may change. That does not change that they still have a stock in the income of the child. Um, great. So, uh, <laughs> um, so anyone have final questions uh, for this guy? Um, then we'll uh, continue. All right. Um, so we're gonna deal uh, with uh, Sunny, Kobe, and then uh, Amanda. All right, and then. Uh... <laughs> um, Omni. Uh, so. You know, it's okay to say that you were wrong on this take. It's all right to be like, hey, I didn't really think that through all the way. Um, you know, Pisco is like really educated and stuff like this. And like, I think if I came up with a new policy or law or something, I think Pisco could probably come through and like tear me apart. Um, and, you know, you're still welcome here and all that. And if you find during like the course of like the convo that you're like, oh, I didn't really think this through. Uh, like, hey, maybe this is getting away from the important topic of talking about indigenous reparations, anything like that. Um, it's always super appreciated if you could be, if you like let it know and just be like, hey, maybe, yeah, maybe let me go research this a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Just sure. let you know. It's, yeah. it's a it's a thing you could do. Um. I I think yeah. And we don't. And actually, I think better people because uh, if you say that you were wrong, right? I and I I try to say when I'm wrong too, right? It it can be tough sometimes. <laughs> but, I mean, there uh, there are definitely a lot of details that have to be perhaps some way of working them out. But yeah. there there are definitely some logistical problems that PSK pointed out that I did not have adequate solutions to. <sighs> um. But I think the idea works. Mm, well, except that proven you, that you, it it I mean, doesn't. And no way, and no way have you shown this no. part. Like in, in no way. But I have Kobe, a minor. Kobe, yeah, I just have like a minor question for the system. It's I don't think it's like a major critique. But like, why would anybody ever invest in this? It seems like an awful art return on investment. Why would a what what would the like why 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 would a rich person not put their money in any Depends of these many other? I I remember right. Is that what you said? No, that was well, yeah, I mean, well. Well, yeah, I mean, we're saying like it's, it'd be horrible. I mean, we we were kind of getting into this, right? I mean, like it'd be impossible to make any kind of prediction on this. It'd be incredibly again, we, we'd have all these problems of like rich communities would say rich. I don't know, like why would anybody ever invest in this to Tommy? Um, well, people would invest because the return on investment is high. How do we, um, how, how do we know it's going to be that? Well, because so we would calibrate the amount of the, the percentage of the income that's gained to be such that the return on investment is relatively high. Yeah, but isn't this like a really, really, I, I mean, I, I was going to reach out what was going over. This is like, a, it seems like it's like a really, vo really volatile commodity. <laughs> it seems like it might be like really difficult to actually like know what your return on investment is. As Pico said, it can be very, you know, be very difficult. It'd be impossible. There's a lot of commodities. That I, I, I would wonder, I'm going to ask one more question and I, I don't want to, I don't want to take too much time. What, why, why do you think no other country, other nation has ever done anything similar to this ever? Well, I mean, I think a lot of reasons. One is the idea is arguably insane. Um, well, one yeah, is that arguably. I think, 
I mean, like there are, there are a lot of things that I think are not done by countries. I mean, very few democracies have a carbon tax, despite there being like 90% economic consensus. Okay, so let's just cut to the chase. All right, so look, um, you're commodifying child abuse is what you're doing. You're, you're commodifying- We're commodifying avoiding child abuse. You're commodifying child. That's ch- commodifying child abuse. It's we're literally the same we're thing. Commodifying it's literally not the same thing. Abuse. It's literally the same thing, right? What? Commodifying it's the, the negative exactly the is commodifying the positive. No, it's not it's- Omni because people are going to take bets against whatever the the good outcome is. If people are making bets in favor it of, of it, then the people are going to make bets against it, aren't they? Are you making it impossible for people to bet that their income is going to be twenty thousand dollars a year or less than that? If you're not excluding those kinds of bets, in other words. Uh, nobody, it sounds like you're no, you're allowing people to make bets that the child is not going to do well. Nobody has a. So there is already goal. facts and statistics. Sorry that the child does not do well. I mean, one in seven children within the first year after aging out of the foster care system end up in jail, homeless, or dead. So I mean, come on. Why are we even dis- Why is this topic even still being discussed? Um, I want to ask quick. I unmuted myself. I'm on my computer. Did you guys hear that? <laughs> oh yeah. We yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, geez, darn. Okay, sorry. Um, and the other thing is, is so I um, memorized Iowa Juveniles Code. I uh, lobbied to change the juvenile codes, especially in regards to foster care and everything that you are stating. You are literally taking away the few good things that are in the codes. <laughs> um, like for instance, one of the things in Iowa, it is there has to be a hearing within ten days after a child is removed. Most states are within seventy-two hours. Please tell me how this entire system is going to operate at this type of speed. It's not. You have proposed the most insane idea I think I have ever heard. And yeah, no, just th- this is just absolutely ridiculous. Uh, and and, and uh, KTN, just final word on this. I mean, how deep is your research into this topic? He said 20 minutes. He said 20 minutes. So that's... Oh, yeah. All right. Um, all right. <laughs> all right. Well, <laughs> that was... That was magic, I thought. <laughs> this was... This was like, not the good kind of magic, like the cursed kind of magic, like the monkey yeah, paw like black type magic, of magic. Yeah, this dark is, magic. This is yeah. the monkey paw magic, right? Like you this make is the a monkey magic. paw of having a Twitch politics channel. <laughs> yeah, of being doing debate <laughs> on Twitch. This is the monkey paw. Ah, <laughs> yeah. uh, well, I, 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 Omni, I said we'd have a lot of fun with you. I did not when I said that. I and I meant it. Um, uh, in in, the, uh, in a positive way. I did not imagine. All of this, you're 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 fantastic. Please come back. Oh, please come back. Uh, this is a lot of fun. Um, all right. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know where to take this. I don't know uh, where where uh, we could branch off uh, from here. Uh, Anyone have anything else to say? Yeah. Um. Here here's what I'll say. All right. I'll say this to the audience. Um. Hi all. If you've been enjoying what just happened, <laughs> if you enjoyed what just happened here, first of all, hit the follow button. Um, hit the notification bell if you haven't done so already. All right, so you know I'm going live because I do this content six days a week. I give you a lot of content here, and some of it is this. Uh, some of it is magic, black magic sometimes, evil magic, cursed magic sometimes, but um, uh, <laughs> magic. So, so um. Uh, hop off the channel uh, if you haven't done so yet, right? <laughs> we just gave you a lot, people. We just literally gave you a lot. Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Subscribe right now. Five dollars keeps this channel alive and keep this content such that it is, right? Uh, <laughs> this is. <laughs> I can't find these people if you're not helping me out, right? If you're not uh, assisting in all this, so thank you, Chris Cosmo. Uh, for being so kind as to give a hot tier one guest up to the channel if we get two more donations we can start a hype train uh and wouldn't that be amazing uh but, and thank you uh shadow fox for gifting 500 bits get one more donation we can start a hype train uh because this would be great uh for <laughs> i don't i i my channel okay the beauty of this channel is that it uh encourages this type of um, involvement with, with uh, audience members. So Omni here, uh, and others, and others. I don't want to just point out Omni, but others, uh, like all the rest, have come in and uh, joined in and to uh, give their opinions and their perspectives. 
Uh, and the mix of that and how that actually plays out, who knows? I don't mean particular night. Um, but, <laughs> but sometimes it can be explosive, <laughs> as you've seen today. Uh, so if you want more of that, help us out. Help us out. In the next four minutes, we get another donor, a third donor, a third donor. To be so kind, help us out and get ourselves a hype train started would be great um so uh sub to the channel if you're not already subbed right thank you for the 200 bits uh sunny thank you sunny for being so kind a constant supporter of the channel uh all right we have ourselves a hype train four and a half minutes left on that hype train help us out please um uh so <laughs> yeah yeah uh, I, I have a topic um uh, if no one knows sure uh as soon as we're uh, done with the part where uh, i uh, raise money to do this for one other day, right? <laughs> uh, so, okay. yeah, no problem. Um, thank you for the 500 bits, uh, Shadow Fox, for being so kind, helping us out. Uh, yeah, that, that does mean a lot. Um, and um, uh, we're 57% um, into a level one hype train, uh, four and a half minutes left on the clock. Can we get to a level two hype train? Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, we gather individuals all the time, right? And we have these incredible moments. Um, I'm curious if any of any moment from here will end up at the top of uh, live stream fails, uh, like last time. Uh, this is the thing that we, we do. <laughs> um, explosive moments that you don't see anywhere else. I'm telling you, you don't see anywhere else. Uh, this is the only channel, the only channel on Twitch where this stuff happens, right? You will not find this anywhere else, right? If you value that. Now it's the time to help out. Thank you, uh, Bobster, uh, for Bobster99, for gifting your first sub uh, to the community. Thank you for deciding to invest in this community uh, and help us out. Gifting a hot tier one gift up to uh, Tower 2 King. Thank you so much. Um, you're keeping this channel alive. Thank you for for, for jumping in and uh, deciding this is worth uh, your hard earned money. Uh, yeah, so. <laughs> um, uh, we, uh, we, we put this together and. Uh, I think it's great because one, we can have days where we have deep discussions on topics, right? Like we were actually doing earlier today, right? So, oh, thank you, uh, Neil, uh, for being so kind as to give five hot tier one gifts up to the channel. Um, and you're paying for these are your first uh, uh, subs to the channel. You're paying for a gift that you got from our great friend Leah, who's a great supporter of this uh, channel. Um, so she gave you a sub. You're paying for that for it. Thank you for deciding that even though you had the benefits of uh, subbing. Oh, wow. Um, thank you. Um, even though you had the benefit of subbing, you decided to invest in this channel any which way. So thank you, Neil. We have to uh, do that for the people who are so kind as to keep this channel alive. Thank you, thank you, thank you for making that first step in investing here. Thank you for Vault Rise for being a continued supporter and gifting 10 hot tier one gift subs to the channel. I think we're at level three hype, uh, hype train. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you so much, guys. This is this means a lot. Um, I can't keep doing this. I can't provide you this otherwise. And like I'm saying, uh, oh, 700 bits for good for Gabby. Good for Gabby, a continuous supporter of the channel. She's always coming back and helping us out, um, making these hype trains happen. Thank you, good for Gabby. Um, yeah, there is no other channel, period, where you find this. None. It doesn't happen. Not anywhere, right? This is the place. That happens simply because we just allow other people, random people, to come in. That's uh, allows for anything to happen. You never know what will happen on any individual night. Um, and so, if you want to see that uh, continue, if, uh, for us uh, and my team uh, to put in the time and effort to uh, gather these individuals, right, for our closed panels, right, and then sit here for fucking <laughs> uh, eight hours, right, uh, on these open panels, then please, please uh, donate. Um, thank you, Good for Gabby, for gifting uh, a hot tier one gift sub. We are 74% into a level three hype train. Please, let us get to a level four hype train. I know we can. Help us out. Uh, I, I thank you for the community so far for the help. Uh, our good friend Sunny, Sunny, right there, uh, gifting another hot tier one gift sub. Thank you for your continued investment. It's really kind of you, Sonny. Um, and every little bit helps, as you guys are all seeing. And then uh, Jai, uh, who's here as well. Thank you, Jai. Gifting 500 bits. Thank you so much. Um, we are 90% uh, through a level three hype train. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, so far, I know we can get there. 8% left. Can we get there? Um, they give us 65 bits. Uh, nine tails. <laughs> that helps too. Every little. I did say every little bit helps, so that helps as well. Shadow Fox gifting a hot tier one gift subs, putting us over the edge. Shadow Fox is continuing a gift subs, paying forward one. Sorry, paying forward a gift sub they got from Cuban Coffee. Thank you, Cuban Coffee, for helping out Shadow Fox and Shadow Fox. Uh, this is your first 
uh, gifts up shadow fox is surprising you've been here for a while um i mean i i thank you for it um i just i just you oh i guess you just always give fits you i know you've been a supporter you just always give fits i'll take the support anywhere i can thank you for being so kind as to invest in this way as well thank you so much shadow fox we are a level four hype train we are a level four hype train it's happening it's happening it's unbelievable thank you our good friend essay one of our, our our top donors one of the kindest individuals here um uh most, most generous people who actually has designed a new emote exclamation point emote in chat uh lets you uh see that um we have uh yet a uh, uh i did not not show up so i'm gonna try to get um, there we go. Um, we got a new emote. Um, the stream is ending emote, but the stream is not ending, so there's no reason to use that. Thank you for the 330 bits. Naira Socks, thank you for gifting a hot tier one gifts of elf well. We are 15% of a level 4 hype train, everyone. It's amazing. It's amazing. I didn't think we'd get this far. We have, um, because we're doing this together. So, um, yes, if you want to, uh, get those emotes, then sub to the channel. Sub to the channel. Um, that's the way to make that happen. Uh, you can use your Prime uh, sub, right? So if you have the uh, Amazon Prime, you have a Prime Gaming uh, sub, use that here, right? You get one free sub a month. One free sub a month, use it on this uh, channel. We give you so much content. Uh, oh, six days a week we're giving this content. Thank you, uh, Shadow Fox, for another 500 bits. Six days a week we're giving this content. Uh, a tidal wave of content, right? And interesting folks come together, right? And we have clashes, like with Omni and Pisco here, right? That wasn't that fun. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, to continue that, to make that happen, right? Um, for just one other day, I need your help, right? So, yes, you can, um, uh, you can gift, you can sub yourself. You can gift bits like Shadow Fox has been doing, or you can gift subs like so many others have been doing um, yourself, uh, themselves. You can multi muff sub, right? So if you want to give continuous support to the channel, right? continuous support, um, that'd be it's a great way of helping us out for so for three six months. Um, continuous support for the channel, um, it's very helpful. Thank you, uh, Silent Storm, for the 500 bits. All right, we're moving things along. Two and a half minutes up on the clock. 29 percent uh, done. Can we get there? Can we get there? Um, 80 or 71 percent left um, of a level four hype train can we get to a level five hype train um uh what else i was going to say uh we have more content for you uh tomorrow one way or the other we have the all black everything uh panel uh which has just been ex fucking explosive over the last few weeks right uh so uh if you enjoy that content right and uh what we've been doing there and the topics we've been exploring right and the panelists have been putting together right Help us out. Now's the time to invest. We have less than 90 seconds. Oh, actually, uh, over 90 seconds on the uh, clock. Uh, help us. Thank you, Top Dolphin, who has been on uh, the All Black Everything uh, panel. Uh, thank you for resubbing um, and continuing your sub. If you're just continuing your sub, that does mean a lot. That uh, does do a lot for the channel. It helps keep uh, keep us operational. Um, so thank you for everyone who, who resubs. Um, if you can just do that, that means a lot. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, we are uh, 37%, less than 90 seconds left on the clock. Uh, can we get to a level five hype train? Thank you all for who uh, doing it so far. So yes, we'll have all black everything tomorrow, and then we're doing Praxis on uh, Friday. Remember, we're uh, organizing for Medicare for all on Friday. It's a brand new thing we're doing. I'm so excited. I want you all to be there, right? I want you all to be a part of it. I want you all to share. I'm going to tweet about it tomorrow, all right? We're going to advertise it. I want you all to share that, and I want you to be a part of it. Come and share your stories. Um, in the event, right? But it's a new thing we're doing, right? So it's new content, but beyond that's actually, it's actually trying to make a difference in the outside world rather than just talking about like we do here so well, right? Thank you, Shadow Fox, for another 500 bits. Uh, we have uh, 30 seconds, 30 seconds left on the clock. Can we get to a level five hype train? Uh, just less than half uh, way down here. Um, yeah, so um, we're doing more. And then of course on Saturday, we'll have our prime, Time, Roy, Al, uh, our game show. We've all been loving it. We'd love to have you uh, jump in on that. Um, so, uh, but thank you for the people who have so far. After this, of course, I'm going to um, uh, thank our top five donors um, and all all they do uh, for this channel because this channel does not live about them. Uh, if people don't donate, then we don't have this content. It all disappears. Um, so uh, I thank you for those who actually did step up, like Shadow Fox did a lot. Thank you, Shadow Fox for being so kind um, as to help us out. Um, so yeah, I'll thank our, our top five donors. Uh, at the top of that list, of course, will be our good friend, Leah, who was uh, so kind as to um, uh, uh, gift a freaking 
billion, well, not billion yet, but uh, a lot of subs. Hold on, let's pull uh, Omni back in. Uh, but uh, uh, Leah's at the top of that list. As soon as the thing appears on my screen, I'll, I'll read them out. Um, but and and if you're just uh, gifting a, a few bits, right, a few bits when you can, or subbing and resubbing, that's that's enough. Thank you so much for those who can do at least that for the channel. You're keeping us alive um okay top five donors over there um leah at this point 31 subs for the month thank you leah um thank you for being so kind karma jewelry with 11 subs thank you revolt rise with 10 thank you so much revolt rise just get, gave those 10 subs uh psycho uh or, yeah psycho uh with fifth, five subs a uh, neo with five subs as well thank you thank you thank you oh yeah end of it we have leah once again with ten thousand bits that was all just yesterday thank you leah holy crap good for gabby with 3906 bits shadow fox with two uh thousand bits essay with 1433 bits and samantha banana with a thousand bits uh thank you all so much okay um thank you thank you thank you all right uh so omni omni you said you had a topic go ahead yeah, um, my topic is I think that animals deserve to be treated better um, and that factory farming is amongst the worst atrocities in history. Um, currently, you know, in the egg industry, billions of animals are ground up in factory farms in every year. 80% um, of pigs, by the time they're sent to slaughter, have pneumonia as a result of being forced to live in their own feces. Animals are frequently have their testicles removed with no anesthetic and have their teeth pulled out in procedures that are very painful. Um, and this should not be done in a, you know, I, in a supposedly civilized society. We should not treat animals the way that we treat animals. Um, even if one says that animals matter somewhat less than humans, it, even if we say they only matter 1% as much as humans, well, then we would still have to say that our current treatment of animals, which affects about 60 billion animals every year, if, they're, if it's 1% as bad, then that would be as bad as torturing and killing 600 million humans every year, which would be the worst thing in the world if that were happening. And so even if we say that animals only matter 1% as much, we'd still say that it's the worst crime that's going on today. Um, and so I think our treatment of factory farms, or of animals in factory farms, has to end. Um, 